I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did fail her. Was supposed to move on from that. She was 22. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. This is Talk Today with Jeremy Kyle and Nicola Thorpe. Good morning, my friends. Just gone six on Monday, the 25th of March. You're with Talk Today on TV, radio, online and your smart speaker. Here are your top stories this morning. Threat from the East. A group of MPs and peers will be told today they have been the targets of a string of cyber attacks from China. Tipped for terror after a deadly attack in Moscow over the weekend. The UK is warned of the very real threat of Islamic State. And finally, privacy for the princess in the wake of Kate's uh, cancer announcement on Friday. Kensington Palace releases a statement thanking well wishers but asks again for the public to give her space and time. And it's an increasingly wet start to the week as rain will be pushing northwards across many parts of the UK today with the risk of snow. I have the details in the forecast later. Cheers, Naz. Now it's time for the headlines with Emily. Thank you, Nicola. Good morning. Four men have been charged with terrorism in Russia following a concert hall attack that killed 137 people. In the last few hours, three of the men were marched into a court in Moscow while a fourth was pushed in a wheelchair. Russia claim Ukrainian involvement, however, Kyiv says those allegations are absurd. Islamic State has since said it was behind the attack on the Crocus City Hall on Friday. Well, U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris says there's no evidence whatsoever to back Moscow's claims. So let me start by saying what has happened in an act of terrorism and the number of people who've been killed is obviously a tragedy, and we should all um, send our condolences to those families. Um, no, there is no whatsoever any evidence, and in fact, what we know to be the case is that ISIS-K is actually, um, by all accounts, responsible for what happened. Back here in MPs is set to be briefed about the cyber threat posed by China, while some individuals will be told about direct threats against them. Sources close to the matter have said that the Deputy Prime Minister Oliver Dowden is expected to make a statement to Parliament later, in which he'll also outline that the personal data of more than 40 million voters was accessed last year. Meanwhile, the Chancellor Jeremy Hunt has said his party is committed to keeping the triple lock system on state pensions if the Conservatives win the election. The pledge means the increase is the highest of average earnings growth, inflation or 2.5%. Labour is yet to reveal if the triple lock will feature in its manifesto. A man has been arrested on suspicion of murder at Heathrow Airport just hours after a man was hit by a car and killed in East London. The Metropolitan Police say officers were called to reports of a crash in Newham yesterday, where a 35-year-old was found injured at the scene. And there's been a mixed reaction to Japan's plans to build an entire theme park based on the animated series Dragon Ball. A 70-metre dragon will be built in the centre with at least 30 rides, including roller coasters, surrounding it. It's set to be the world's first attraction that's been based entirely on a popular media franchise. Those are headlines. I'll have another update at 7 o'clock. Why are they upset about it, then? I don't know. I guess it's, it's going to be a, a big thing. And if you don't like the, the show, then you probably wouldn't want to go there, right? Can I just say, you're looking remarkably Talk Today-esque and Ukrainian this morning. We ladies, are. Right? We're very on-brand, blue and yellow. Can I share a story with you? I've already said I told Nick, so I'll just get your reaction. This is genuinely true. Um, nothing to do with anything that's coming up on the show. So I left the show on Thursday and I went to the station. Um, I went on the tube. Very good again, see? And One I went to Waterloo to get the train back to the coast. And honestly, Em, this is genuine. I don't, you know those moments and you realise you are getting old, right? I came out of M&S with my little prawn sandwich, the special one, with the lettuce in, right? Because it makes you feel like you're having some healthy stuff. And this voice went, Jezza! Right? And across the concourse, around 30 people, I recognised Sue Pollard. Do you know who Sue Pollard is? From the... Yes, and for some unknown reason, instead of going, hello, Sue, I went, hi hi Like that, in front of 30 people. What? what why? Uh, what do you mean, what? Hi, I went, Heidi, hi! 
<laughs> Give us her reaction. Hi, hi. We had this bizarre conversation that I got on the train and did for the whole journey. Did you know how to get on the tube this time, though? Because oh. I once bumped into you yeah. down there and you didn't know how to get on. I'm really into it now. Into the tube. But I have to tell you something very true. And I was coming out of Waterloo the other day and a young man mm. uh, slid underneath the barriers and ran, pursued by people. He didn't even jump over the top, he went underneath. Underneath? <laughs> that's quite, that's that's quite a feat. That's quite a to get away with playing for it. Right. So there you are. Hi, hi. How was your weekend, Lady Very nice. Blue? Yes, thank you. Yeah? Lots of Mexican lovings and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> My goodness, My Jeremy husband's Tyler. Mexican, for anyone wanting to know what that meant. Right, yeah. listen, that's a little bit light-hearted. Um, loads going on in the world and so much to cover this morning on the show. We'll be talking, obviously, about that Russian attack. Many people having lots to say about that. I noticed Awful. the Americans have wheeled out Kamala Harris again. To speak on the matter, yeah. Nick and I, not, not actually... We're talking about this before we came on air. There's a lot of people... Uh, what's it called? That that if you do it yourself, what was that phrase? Oh, false flag. A lot of people are saying, have Russia done this to be able to exert more pressure on Ukraine? And of course, the wider problem is, what does it say about the security of the world? Lots of talk this morning. Major Chip Chapman will be on. Tobias Elwood will be on. We try to, you know, work out what it means for people on a daily basis, and we'd love to hear from you. Talk today at talk.tv. Is that right? That's absolutely right. You can tweet at Talk TV or text Talk plus your message to 8722. But as Jeremy said, on to our top story now. And MPs are set to be briefed on the cyber threat posed by China later after suspicions that Beijing is behind a wave of cyber attacks against parliamentarians. They've also been accused of accessing the personal details of 40 million voters in a hack on the Electoral Commission last year. Joining us now is uh, counter-terrorism expert in front of the show, Major General Chip Chapman. Chip, good morning. Um, before we we talk about um, how worried. I think whenever we talk about things like this, people, some people will go, oh, for goodness sake. But I've been reading stuff all weekend, not only accessing 40 million people's details, uh, they're talking about how, um, you know, uh, uh, the royal family, this, this, this Ferrari at the moment could have come from, from, from Russia and from China. What, what is the reality for people waking up this morning? What should they think about these headlines that are, that are everywhere, frankly? Well, data harvesting and social engineering are prevalent things from all authoritarian states, both in their internal populations and externally. So everything, for example, on TikTok is a form of data harvesting by the Russians. If you get enough data about people, you can compromise people. So you have both um, cyber intrusions to try and steal things and to compromise things. And that's really what they're doing here. So when we use the term compromise, often applied to Russia, that is to get enough information to compromise people, either using money, ego, revenge or ideology. Because there are a lot of people, of course, who want to um, affect Chinese policies and those that China and that particularly the Chinese Communist Party view as threats. It wants to counter those who are critical of their narratives, policies and actions. So if you get enough data, you can do that. And that's the difficulty of cyber intrusions. Now, everything can be intruded in one sense or another because the father of cryptography, Turing, that great man from the Second World War, uh, did say that there's no such thing as a secure door, whether front, back or side. There are strong doors in various degrees of security. But you can you know, make sure that you take enough actions for example, I would never go on TikTok to ensure that you don't compromise your actions and you don't get into these um, sort of um, small data groups by uh, looking at people who just follow your views. You need a, a large worldview, otherwise you are potentially compromised. Absolutely. Chip, you said there that you would never join TikTok. Mm. Why is that? We know that TikTok's banned in several countries around the world, uh, predominantly in America, it's been spoken about a lot. But why would you advise people not to actually download and use the app TikTok? Well, it absolutely is to do with that thing about data harvesting. So um, if you, any time you go onto a, a social media platform, all that data is harvested by that organisation. And, you know, you could say that, you know, People like Google might be benign, um, they might not be, but people like the Chinese Communist Party are not benign. And uh, something about data is, you know, it never forgets. You might forget what you did last week, Nicola, or last month, but the data of what you did and where you were by what is given out by a mobile phone or whatever is uh, is always there. So is it any true, app, Chip, for somebody example, just said to me, phone, is it true that that TikTok is banned in the United States? 
Uh, not yet. Um, there, there was going. There was a bill going through. I think the Senate last week, looking at that. And it's not just the fact. It's not TikTok. It's all those things I mentioned about the data harvesting, which is the concern. Uh, and it's really wider than that, of course, because uh, China seeks to do this. This both in terms of government, private sector, and critical national infrastructure networks. That is uh, in pl uh, placing that sort of mal malware into systems for use in times of war or pre-war. And that is my next question, really, Chip, because even me, who's not the most, you know, computer literate, realises that increasingly so much of our infrastructure, you know, is dependent on technology, which presumably, without getting too deep at 10 past 6 in the morning, puts us all in a, 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 in a more dangerous and precarious position. It can do, but you can air gap between digital and analogue systems. Um, and there's also never been a cyber Pearl Harbor, neither has there been a cyber uh, Hiroshima. And, you know, the key questions you always ask yourself in terms of this and uh, in sort of these threats are how did people get in? What did they touch? What is the uh, quickest route to recovery? And there's no cyber attack, which is not ever been recovered from. So uh, it's not Armageddon, but it's that data harvesting at an individual and collective level, which is uh, is the real threat at the moment as China seeks to exploit its uh, advantages in terms of science and technology for the future. And Chip, we know that um, over 40 million voters were hacked from the Electoral Commission mm. last year. Obviously, that can be a lot possibly to do with data harvesting in that case. But there's a smaller group of parliamentarians who are going to be briefed later on and told that they were targeted specifically. Do we know any more information about the way in which they were targeted and what they were targeted for? Well, again, I would think that they would be targeted for their views, which were anti-Chinese, and therefore to try and compromise them so that they either don't have those views or work uh, either benignly or in, uh, or overtly for the Chinese. That's why they seek to do that. Um, the, the data harvesting in terms of the Electoral Commission, uh, how you really affect elections is not by getting 40 million people's data, it's getting the data of people in marginal constituencies and influence those by uh, messages either from malinformation, disinformation or, uh, or misinformation. And you amplify those messages and by sort of uh, targeted advertising via social media sites or whatever. That is how you affect elections. That was one of the things, for example, that was done in the 2016 election in America. Um, we're, we're both sat there open mouthed yeah. and, and, and it's crazy. But just briefly, because we haven't got a lot of time, I'd love to have more time. A couple of things. What does this mean for the average member of society? Waking up this morning, they hear about, you know, the terror threat is raised. They probably listen to you talking enormous sense and think, oh, my God, or they think, oh, rubbish, whatever, I'm going to get on with my life. What should your average person be thinking this morning, Chip? Well, we are in digital age and uh, all that information is power. You know, you you don't have a mobile phone, you have a computer, which is an intrusive surveillance device. That is the world we live in. You just have to get used to that and try not to be... Uh, too over and what you do and what you say on social media and on your phone. You are tracked every hour of the day. That is, the, we're not in the analogue age any longer. And um, what should uh, UK policymakers be doing mm. with this information, Chip? What do you think the UK needs to do in order to protect itself from cyber attacks of this nature? Well, you certainly don't want to let um, Chinese technologies into your system because um, that can be a, a route for uh, the, the use of cyber techniques and tools against you. But it's also worth saying that both the UK and the US are cyber superpowers, which in uh, extremists that we could deny, degrade and destroy other uh, group systems. We hold the greatest treasure of what, what are called zero day capabilities. That is uh, sort of software flaws, which we have kept for potential use if we go towards any sort of conflict with these powers. Wow. Uh, honestly, actually, I'm going to be told off by day literally 30 seconds. That horrendous attack over the weekend. A lot of people are saying, this is, I'm going to use the wrong words, forgive me, this is false flag, this is Putin giving him more opportunity and rhetoric to go and do even worse things in Ukraine. Your thoughts very quickly, Chip Chapman. That's a rubbish. There have been first-person view videos claimed by the Islamic State. This was a, a jihadist attack, nothing to do with Russia, but this is what we call narrative laundering uh, because... Um, Putin didn't take the threat seriously that the Americans gave him on the 7th of March. 
The Americans did that because of their duty to warn uh, after 9-11. It's all to do with the American uh, sig signals intelligence capability, collect it all, know it all, exploit it all, give that information so countries can do about it. China, did, uh, R Russia didn't take that threat seriously enough. It shows the weakness of the intelligence agencies in Russia. Uh, it's not a false flag operation. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. She loves you, Chip. Honestly, Chip. she <laughs> loves you, man. You are my favourite guest. Major General Chip Chapman, thank, thank you. you so much for making sense of all of that for us. Well, he did as well. He did. He yeah. always does. Uh, let's take a look at some of this morning's front pages now. It's our top story today. The Sun says Britain will officially blame China for the 2021 cyber attack today in Parliament, as the papers say that hackers access the personal details of 40 million UK voters. Scary. The mirror reveals that a third of landlords have been forced to close pubs as early as 8pm due to costs and lack of custom. That's so sad. And finally, royals will come back stronger, claim the mail, as the paper reveals that King Charles hopes to attend Royal Ascot this summer, as well as some summer parties at Buckingham Palace. Staying with that royal news story now, and over the weekend, the world was left truly shocked by the mm. Princess of Wales cancer diagnosis. I don't know, it's one of those moments where you say, where were you? I was oh, gosh, gobsmacked. Yeah. I watched it with my mother-in-law. We were, uh, yeah, we were very touched. In a personal message to the public, she ended months of horrendous speculation about her health and intrusion into our family's privacy. Well, Kate's revelation marks an unprecedented openness about the health of our most senior royals, with both the king and the future queen suffering with the disease. <clears throat> but it comes alongside a strong request from privacy, for privacy, sorry, from the princess, not least for the sake of her young family. Well, joining us now from LA is royal commentator Kinsey Schofield. Kins, a weekend of revelations. What has the reaction to Kate's video message been on Friday? How has it come across in the United States? Uh, it was wall-to-wall -wall coverage here in the States. As I've said multiple times on this program, she's the most popular member of the royal family here. And uh, Americans really, unfortunately, I feel like they ate up that gossip. You were just talking about how toxic and scary TikTok can be. Uh, and that was one of the drivers when it came to some of the most horrible conspiracy theories surrounding the Princess of Wales and their algorithm uh, really pushed th this conversation. Uh, so um, I think that Americans are obviously incredibly sympathetic. I think you're going to see them pull back immensely. But what I will say to you, Nick, is I really hope TMZ, which crossed the line multiple times over the last few months with the Princess of Wales, I really, I hope that they will give her a break and give her a rest here in the States because, uh, you know, they, they hammered her. They had people sitting outside of Windsor to capture her uh, going to appointments and hopefully they'll uh, lay off of her. Um, Really glad to have you on. I saw your reaction on Friday, which I think says everything for you as a broadcaster. And I I've been waiting all weekend to say this. I absolutely acknowledge that um, <clears throat> the quest, this all started with this Photoshop photo, and maybe in hindsight that wasn't such a good idea. But what's, what really turned my stomach over the weekends is those, <clears throat> those celebrities or that idiot, what's that left-wing bloke here called Owen? rowing back on the most ridiculous things that they've said. And then I read this morning on my way in that there are people now saying online this is an AI-generated thing. Let's just put this down to the fact this is a woman with three young kids who's been diagnosed with cancer. She looked ill, she sat there, she was honest. If people don't get them in... And I hope... And, and I'm being completely... Blake Lively, was it? Kim Kardashian, all these people... I, I tell you what their judgment will be. The judgment will be the world's public, because the world's public now needs to respect Catherine Middleton. Anybody that still peddles this rubbish deserves to do one. I'm just, uh, I'm just, it was awful. It was, it was and, it, and it, I know, you know, cancer is, is everywhere, but it was just the way about the kids and everything and the hammering she's taken. I get the photo started those discussions. We talked We've about that. We've spoken about it on the show, yeah, absolutely. But, but, but at the end of the day, it got beyond, it was bullying and it needs to stop. Yeah, I mean, I think the only thing that we have the power to do is to not feed into it. Don't click on the links. I had so many people sharing videos with me just to say, can you believe this? Well, what you've done is you've enacted some form of engagement, which has alerted something like TikTok or Instagram to the fact that people are interested in this, this video or this post. Don't touch it.
you know, report it if you feel the yeah. need to, but don't engage with it because when we engage with it, that tells the social media algorithm that there, there is something about this post that's going to get people fired up and then they thrust it in front of a brand new audience. So we've got to shut it down. Each and every one of us can do that by just not engaging in it. But we can absolutely focus on the positives that mm. have come out of this. And I think that for a lot of people, um, I mean, it's humanized. Uh, the king and the future queen because, you know, it shows that whoever, whoever you are, cancer can, can affect any kind of family. A lot of the front pages here, particularly the Daily Mail, has got a photo of King Charles and, uh, and Kate there. And I think it's what's been really lovely has shown the strength of their relationship. And there's talk of the fact that they had uh, lunch together to talk about their respective um, cancer diagnoses. It seems to be quite a close bond that they he share. He travelled along, apparently, his dressing gown in hospital <laughs> to see her, which is lovely, isn't it? Imagine that, you've got a visitor, just, the king's here. It just seems to be a very sweet it's relationship. Yeah, and something we'd never really heard described, you know, before this um, close, warm and unique relationship uh, and the closest they've ever been before. And yeah, he said that he was so proud of Catherine for her courage and speaking as she did. And I said on this program last week, I wish we saw a more unified front. I apologize for not being more patient because here we are today discussing um, that there were meetings going on in the background and there's some sincere love here and support happening. Uh, so so I'm so grateful to read those reports and I apologize for suggesting otherwise or for insisting that we, we get this type of information because at the end of the day, knowing what I know now, what a delicate situation. And, and, and these are two, two families that are dealing with the hardest time of their lives. You, know, when you I was can be forgiven though, Kinsey, because it was an unprecedented situation as well. And I think, you know, a lot of protocol had been broken and people really didn't know what was going on. And I, and I said my piece, I said I thought it was wrong that he didn't come out and support him all. Listen, if that's in the wash. Um, I will say one thing, and, and people will criticise what I'm about to say. I'm just going to say this because I had cancer. The good thing about her message was preemptive uh, chemotherapy. Yes. Means that it, for cancer to spread, it has to go through the lymph nodes. And preemptive which is by injection or by pill, means that it hasn't gone through at that stage. And it's a case of... of, of, of I mean, basically, the news is she, they've obviously found it and they're quite hopeful that they've caught it and they're giving her chemotherapy to make sure that that is sorted. But I think the whole nation and the whole world, I agree with you, Kinsey, and I, and I thought you handled it brilliantly on Friday, mate, because it was really obvious how much it meant to you, and I think that's incredible. I think it's important. Yeah, I think it reflected a lot of people's emotions. So thank you, Kinsey, thank for joining us Thanks, this morning. Uh, still to come on Talk Today, Jeremy Hunt confirms the Tories will keep the pension triple lock if they win the next election. And... And pub landlords call time at 8pm due to costs and lack of custom. This will devastate our next guest, Ava Santina <laughs> from Politics Joe, who likes the pub, and the spectators, Freddie Gray. They're here to take us through this morning's papers. Do stay with us. 6.22, we're live across the UK. It's Monday morning. We'll talk to them. We're coming right back. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested 
Alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square because you've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what did fail her. We're supposed to, supposed to was have another moved on from era. That. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to you Talk Today. It is 6.25. We'll have the weather in just a moment, but here's what else is coming up in the programme. A surge of nearly 9,000 overseas nurses are quitting the NHS and leaving the UK every year in search of higher pay. We'll discuss that in the papers next. Is a £100,000 salary enough? Chancellor Jeremy Hunt doesn't seem to think so, claiming his constituents struggle on the six-figure sum. More on that at 6.45. We're back to optics, aren't we? How does that sound to... Pe oh, just before seven, as Sir Keir Starmer visits Wales, bravely, uh, to launch his plans for a publicly-owned clean energy company. We'll hear from Shadow Welsh Secretary Joe Stevens about Labour's pledge, and we'll fl flow in as well that today the government are also talking about... It's just tit for tat now, isn't it? <laughs> it is, isn't it? They're talking nuclear, they're going to Wales. Welcome to politics. Well, yes. first, let's take a look at the weather with Naz. What can we expect for the rest of the day? Rain. Yeah, no real change. We're seeing rain spreading <laughs> northwards today. <laughs> yeah, sorry. And um, typical spring-like showers for the rest of the week Hurrah. and into uh, the Easter weekend as well. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Good morning. I'm going to describe today's weather and, in fact, this week's weather like a washing machine. We have this washing machine, a low-pressure system, spinning round and round this week to the west of the UK, bringing with it spells of rain, brisk winds and also lots of showers. There's also cold air sitting to the north of the UK. As that rain spreads northwards today and into tonight, there is going to be some significant snowfall for parts of the high routes of Scotland. So it's all going on this week. This morning, we are seeing rain pretty much everywhere out there this this morning across Ireland, Northern Ireland, western parts of England and Wales edging to the southwest of Scotland. Now that rain will steadily move its way northeastwards through this morning and this afternoon. Ahead of it, it's a bit of a patchy frost around eastern and northern areas of the UK. And as you can see, some wintry showers likely by around mid-afternoon across the highest ground of eastern Scotland. Northern Scotland just about staying dry. Northern Ireland seeing spells of rain and northern England becoming a bit drier across England and Wales this afternoon. But there will be yet more wet weather piling in to the southwest, especially wet across Devon and Cornwall. I think for parts of the southeast of England, though, and East Anglia, there will be some bright or sunny spells where it will feel reasonably warm with temperatures around average for the time of year, around 11 or 12 degrees Celsius. Then overnight, that rain continues its journey further northwards. Now, there is a warning from the Met Office for many central and eastern parts of Scotland as through the night that rain hits the cold air and there is the likelihood of around 10 to 20 centimetres of snow above 300 metres and above around 200 metres around a couple of centimetres of snow. So that could cause some disruption tomorrow morning around the higher routes of Scotland and perhaps for the train lines as well. Everywhere else, it is looking uh, rather wet across parts of western areas of England and Wales through tonight and into tomorrow. That rain will head up towards parts of the Midlands. For Scotland tomorrow, that rain and hill snow will move away northeastwards. Then it becomes brighter, but still some wintry showers likely in the east. Rain for Northern Ireland tomorrow afternoon. And for parts of Wales, the Midlands, down towards the southeast of England, it will be quite a cloudy picture with patchy outbreaks of rain, but brighter to the southwest later. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. 
Thanks, now's my favourite time of the morning. Time to go through the papers with the one and only Ava Santina from Politics Joe and the Spectators, Freddie Gray. Good morning, Good team. Good morning, Good both. Morning. But you're devastated. They're closing pubs at 8 o'clock at night, aren't you? We'll discuss that in a minute. Well, you know, well, since they haven't been open, you know, since 8 in the morning, that's when I've been upset. <laughs> yeah. You used to be able to do that at Smithfield's Market, didn't you? you How many lock-ins have you had, Santina? What, to, tonight? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> she likes a pub. <laughs> Freddie, let's start with you. I mean, it's a big news story. We're trying to keep it as simple as possible because um, mm. today, uh, Chinese hackers, it will be revealed, not only attacked MPs, but 40 million of us, all our personal details, this will be told to Parliament. That This happened in 2022, which then brings this whole discussion about TikTok. We talked to Major Chip Chapman and, and, and China and the threat and the way the world is seemingly dependent on technology. Thoughts this morning? I often feel sorry for these Chinese data analysts that are going to have to go through my data. Uh, somewhere out there, they're going through my unbelievably boring data that they've <laughs> stolen from the electoral roll. Uh, there, there is, there's obviously high China alerts at the moment. Yeah. Uh, we used to worry a lot more about Russia hacking. At the moment, it seems to be the security service are much more obsessed with China hacking. And China has always been data. That's the TikTok story. That's this story with the electoral roll worried about electric cars, all the data being sucked back to China there. Um, it's obviously a huge national security concern. And the reason we're so concerned about it is we know that China don't do it. They don't allow their data to go out yeah. of China. Um, and yet they're absorbing masses of it themselves. Another big story that's going to come out is about China collecting DNA data, which is a big source of concern to the I don't know about DNA. Is that, um, like the, <coughs> is that like the 23 and me where, where you try and well, find Exactly, your... or if you ever have the affinity... Not, is it called affinity? The pregnancy when you're pregnant. Yes. You get the, the genetic test. Yes, That's all going back to China, apparently. Oh. Yeah. oh, goodness me. What have they got on you? Well, all sorts. Mm. Not Again, very boring. Can, can I just say, though, Ava, what I'm interested in about this is, is should we... I mean, th there's talk in America about banning TikTok. Should we be doing more in this country to make sure that we don't get this data harvested by who knows what? Well, that's not quite what America are doing. America are trying to bring it under American ownership. So part, All right, same thing. Do you think we no, should no, do but, more in the UK? But part of that is, is that they are concerned about data on the outside of it. And actually, they, they would just quite like to profit off the social media company. But, um, you know, in the UK, cabinet ministers aren't allowed to have TikTok on their phones. But if you're an MP, you can. The concern is once you've allowed uh, the camera to be used or the microphone to be used by TikTok on your iPhone, you know, it's really difficult to shut that off. And so essentially that means if an MP is walking around Parliament, th there is, you know, a hypothesis that China could technically look through wow. the camera or could listen in through your microphone. There's no on and off switch of when you have allowed that permission to, to stop and start. That's terrifying. This hack, though, was in 2021. One, yeah. Um, 40 million people from the electoral register. How many people vote in the UK? Is that the, the sum of everybody? I didn't think it was that many, to be no, honest. No, I didn't. How many people are in the UK now? 60 well, certainly something? on May 2nd, it won't be 40 million, because no. about 3 million <laughs> will be aware 65 of 65 million, what you usually vote in a general election? 60%? It's, and about around, around that, on so a general around that. Essentially, ev everybody who goes out to vote has probably had their data stolen. And they know all about you. But, I mean, that's just people... Well, people on the electoral roll, you just have to be on the roll to have it stolen. Right, so you don't yeah. actually, yeah, of course, have to vote. But anyway. on TikTok, can I say, I think we absolutely should... Uh, try and restrict it in, mm. in the UK. Mm. Uh, I mean, we've just had this big debate involving the Spectator as well and the Daily Telegraph about whether a foreign government, dangerous foreign government, should own a newspaper. Yes. Um, with TikTok, you know, the, most young people get their news from TikTok yeah, now. Quite and it's right. an algorithm that is ultimately controlled by China. So yeah. I do think it's very dangerous and we should be... Um... I wonder if it contributed to a lot of the conspiracy stuff that went around about Kate I over the past couple of weeks. Well, that's the, the front page of the Telegraph is suggesting mm. that. That's really interesting yeah. as well. I'm not so sure on that. No? I do, I do think that, that is a, a lot of that is to do with uh, Twitter and Elon Musk. So that is actually an American problem rather than it is China. And, and we can't blame the Chinese for the doctored photo. No, of course palace, not. That's that the out. palace themselves. Right, yeah. we're going to move on to the front page of the eye now. UK's nuclear defence boost to protect against Putin. Yeah, there's two stories here that have sort of been smashed together. So yes. on one side of it, Rishi Sunak is announcing this uh, extra £200 million from government to, uh, to, to bolster our nuclear deterrent. And then the other side of that is that Keir Starmer is headed off to Wales this morning to go and meet uh, Vaughan Gething, where he will announce new uh, British green energy plan. Which is nuclear-based well, energy. Well, it actually doesn't... Well, it actually not, doesn't say that it's specifically nuclear, oh. but I suppose in that we mean it is assumed that it's all nuclear. But what Keir Starmer wants to do is he wants to have this British-owned green energy that would mean that we weren't dependent on any other foreign body 
for our energy. So I suppose it's security and defence in that sense, right? Because then you wouldn't be able to blow up a pipeline that leads into the UK. So do, is, it, is it in politics you both know that? Does somebody say on a Saturday, right, Monday, Monday we're doing nuclear. You're, he's going to Wales, so I want you to go to Barrow and Furnace. This is what we're going to get, because call me boring. I mean, people have been talking about nuclear for ages. We haven't had jack from this government, but OK, five months out from a potential election, suddenly he's found 200 million, Starmer's off to Wales. Again, I, I, slightly cynical, perhaps, but it seems to be electioneering. This should have been talked about months or years ago, surely. I think that is how it works. Uh, <laughs> I think they have a media grid, don't they? And they Do go, they? Monday, we're going to make it Nuclear Day. Actually, and, week. And, and somebody saying, Monday, we're going to make it Cyber Security Day. Yeah, yeah got you. It's uh, actually Energy Week for Labour. If we could just, you know, this is what Starmer was talking about a few months ago when he gave a speech. He was going to give us a couple of weeks leading up to the election where he was going to announce, you know, he's had Crime Week. He's, you know, but is, he, is, he, is anybody going to ask him today? <laughs> they do want the offshore wind farm. Hasn't he cancelled his twenty-eight billion pound agreement with? Wait, but he never apparently cancelled the uh, the British energy side of it, the green no. energy plan, which is yeah. more of an industrial plan, which is confusing because that twenty-eight billion pound was an industrial plan, but somehow it does make sense, Jeremy. So if you could just stop asking too many <laughs> questions, <laughs> many you are paid to answer them. <laughs> no, no, for God's no, sake. no, 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 It's written here as uh, UK's nuclear defence boost. Is it really no. a defence boost, or is this Rishi Sunak just committing to replacing Vanguard, which is something he was going to do or would have to do anyway because it needed updating? I think it's connected to... Do you remember the Sun's excellent scoop a few weeks ago about the Trident missiles just yeah. popping into the sea? I think there's <sighs> been a lot of concern in government that actually are much vaunted Trident defence system, which we've already spent £200 billion on. Also. I'm fully expecting to announce 50,000 new army people in the next week and then, you know, more <laughs> submarines and whatever. <laughs> Freddie, uh, Daily Express, I'm going to have my say. Um, yeah, but uh, two things about Hunt. Yeah. Triple lock pensions he's going to keep, 2.5% irrespective of inflation. And then can we please also, because we haven't got much time, get both of your opinions on the fact that he says 100 grand a year is not acceptable for a lot of people. In Surrey, maybe not, but the optics... Talk about being tone deaf, really. It's not very smart politics, is it? No. Oh. Uh, it's not a very intelligent thing to say. On, on the triple lock, that's clear electioneering. I mean, you know, the most likely people to vote are the people who will be concerned about their pensions... Uh, and so they're going to guarantee it, even though everybody knows it's ultimately ruinous to the to the state to keep the triple lock in place forever, to keep pensions pensions protected so so greatly. Uh, and then on on yes on on I can see for a for a person in Westminster, uh, you know, people who live around Westminster. I thought he meant that, per month. You see, I got really yes, confused. Well, you over. Would, what one hundred thousand pounds per month? That's what I thought he meant. Yeah. Over. Right. I thought I thought it was an amazing um, insight because it's probably the the most that he's ever said on the state of um, <laughs> anything. Well, of, of anything really, because what what you're saying is, oh yes, house prices are so out of hand yeah. that it's unaffordable. Childcare is so out of hand. Commuting is so out of hand. It's like yes, Jeremy, exactly. <laughs> and so, who's in charge? And who's in charge <laughs> of this? Who's in? That's Jeremy Hunt, not me. She's yes, right. exactly. She's having <laughs> too many Jeremys. Right, Ava, uh, we're running out of time. I really want to cover this story on the front page of the Mirror about landlords closing pubs. Yes. This has been a concern now for quite some time. And actually, uh, the, the Beer and Pub Association had been speaking to Jeremy Hunt just before the budget that we had a couple of weeks ago and had been begging him to, 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 to allow, well, well, to give sort of help to pubs. So he, they were talking about increased energy spending allowances. So that's what they're really struggling with. They're also struggling, you know, just keeping the lights on. But the real problem is licensing. It's very, very difficult to keep your licence as a pub at the moment if you're in any, any near vaguely a residential area. So local councils have more power over you than the punters. If you're a resident, you can file in a complaint and basically get the pub closed down which means that they're shutting at 8 p.m. to sort of cower to these... Uh, That's why it's 8 p.m. then, rather yeah. than shutting earlier, because that didn't make sense to me. So it's all about noise complaints. Yeah, so it's a grumpy residents who move in next to a pub. I'm sorry, if you move into a pub complaint. knowing that there's a pub there, what can you expect? However, I, I have, I've complained to my pub before. But I... I yeah, I know. I'm sorry, Ava. Oh, we've got a NIMBY in our presence. No, but it was 1 a.m. on a Wednesday. So oh, if, fair. if yeah, this fair is enough. true, why do I read all the time, don't laugh at me, that Weatherspoons' his profits and success is going through the roof and they're opening. Are we talking about small boozers, independent small boozers rather than chains? Because 
I think that's a shame because I think a good old booze is great. That's but, the centre of the community. But also, but Ava does. No, but the, but the, the concept of, weight, of Weatherspoons is so different because they sell in such huge volume. That's yeah. like if you yes. had a fast food restaurant on yeah. its own, it's not going to make a turn a huge profit. But because there's hundreds of I them, bet you help your why they turn a profit. stay alive, don't you? I'd like to do my bit, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, good yeah. for you. Um, we're going to have to Britain, leave it there because we've got a much more important person to speak to than you two. But we're suddenly joking. We'll see you in an hour. Ava Santina, who likes the pub, and um, <laughs> what's he called again? Freddie Gray. Thank you very much yep. indeed. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both. Moving on now. See you so in an hour. Here. Sir Keir Starmer is visiting Wales today, where he will promise investment in the floating offshore wind industry. We're now joined by the Shadow Wales Secretary Joe Stevens. Joe, good morning. Thank you for your time. Uh, your boss says it's time to take back control of our national energy security. Some irony in the fact that Sunak said ignores the barrow in Furness and crying about nuclear. Obviously, Monday is energy day. What's this great British energy plan? Can you explain in layperson's terms for the average listener this morning and viewer? So I'm here in North Wales this morning with Keir Starmer and the new First Minister of Wales, Vaughan Gething, to talk specifically about Great British Energy. So this is Labour's publicly owned clean energy generation company, which we will use to take back control of our national energy security. So that will, as well as investing in clean energy, that's going to deliver cut bills or reduced bills for everybody for good. Um, it will create jobs across the country, good jobs, well paid, and we'll take back control of our energy security. And those jobs and that infrastructure will Jump be built in. to last. So that will be a legacy of the next Labour government. Yeah, that, that's all well and good. And I'm not having a go. I really appreciate it. Can you, for people listening, right? So they will say Labour for months talked about a £28 billion green energy commitment. Now you're talking about this, this British... Uh, energy, green energy company. Explain to me in graphic terms, how does that make bills cheaper? How does that create jobs? Where does that money, where does that come from? How's it going to work? So the money will come from the windfall tax. We have announced a windfall tax, which is at 78%. So the companies, the oil and gas producers that have been making huge profits over the last few years, they will be taxed at 78% on those profits. This is a really exciting, bold and ambitious plan so that we can invest in onshore wind, we'll double onshore wind capacity, we'll treble solar power and we'll quadruple offshore wind. And so here in Wales, we want to play our part in powering the UK for generations to come. So, for example, offshore wind in South Wales, like in the sea and in the Celtic Sea, so that we can be a world leader in this new technology. Um, and Joe, can you tell us a little bit more about the Energy Independence Act? This mm. is um, proposals to try and stop the UK being taken over by so-called energy dictators. What does that really mean? Well, what it means is that what we've seen over the past 14 years where we've had no industrial strategy and no plan about how we deliver secure, clean, green energy in the future, um, We've had foreign governments make, basically making a profit out of our energy system. And during that period, everybody's bills have gone up. So, um, so this is to make sure that we have the capacity within Britain to generate our own clean energy. And that because the company will be publicly owned, any profits from that will be going back into the company for the benefit of the British taxpayer. So we're in a position where we've got this clear plan. We have got the funding. We've said where the funding is going to come from to um, create great British energy. We've got private investors who will, for every pound we put in, will put in three pounds of private investment. And they're ready to go. They're really got keen on this plan. Hold on, hold on. You've got private investors lined up that are going to give you three times as much as the government's going to put in? We have said, you know, for every pound that we invest, we will be able to draw in three pounds from the private sector. So, for example, last week I was at the port of Milford Haven off Pembrokeshire. This is a port that at the moment brings in 20 percent. So 20 percent of the energy that the UK needs comes in through this port. And they are one of the areas that would really like to see renewable energy um, built. They, they put in a bid to have a renewable energy hub there. The government last week decided that they weren't going to offer them the opportunity to do that. We've had companies bidding under the current government's plans for offshore wind contracts in an auction, and the government rejected all of them. So I have to, our plan I have is to there. jump in. It's, it's, there, the funding there. is there, it's ready to go, and private investors want to be part of it. Very interesting to see how it pans out. Good ideas. We'll see. I mean, Sunak's gone north to talk about nuclear. Just want to throw a couple of the news stories at you today, please. Get Labour's response. Mm -hmm. Obviously, overnight, 
um, this, this threat from China. Everybody's talking about this cyber threat and 40 million people in 2021. Most of the voting British public seemingly having their details hacked. It's all about harvesting data. Uh, as, as much as Ch uh, China is a threat, tell me Labour's view. Would you try and ban TikTok in the United Kingdom? Because it's becoming increasingly obvious that that's half the problem. Well, I mean, obviously, the reports overnight are incredibly worrying, um, and they highlight the importance of taking robust action to tackle state threats, whether they're coming from China or elsewhere. So what we need is a government strategy to tackle those threats, so proper working, closer working between the Home Office and the Foreign Office to coordinate our strategic response to that. We're going to hear a statement, I think, from the government in the Commons this afternoon, so there'll be more detail about exactly what's happened and what the government proposals are. But it's absolutely right that we need to take steps to protect our democracy. And Joe, just quickly, can I get your comments on uh, Jeremy Hunt's comments over the weekend that a hundred thousand mm. pound salary was not enough for his constituents in Surrey? I think, well, from my perspective here in Wales, people will be really offended and surprised by that. You know, the the average wage in Wales is around twenty five thousand pounds a year. So to be told by the Chancellor that if you earn a hundred thousand pounds a year, um, it's not enough to live on, I think that's pretty offensive. Absolutely. Joe Stevens, very interesting. Uh, we'll watch with bated anticipation. Sunak goes north to talk nuclear. Starmer goes to Wales to talk about green energy. Secretary of State for Wales, Joe Stevens, thank you very much indeed. Still to come Jack. this morning, a government advisor has called for a ban on demonstrations outside schools. Is she right? We'll discuss that next. This, my friends, is Talk Today. We're coming right back. Don't go anywhere. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat, go. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <is it? laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <you've got> to... <laughs> Yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did to, fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth.
Uh, welcome back. We're talking today, 12 minutes to 7 o'clock. Right now, a new report. We're going to do my best to try and explain this. It's claimed that Britain's democratic resilience is being eroded by wide-ranging threats, including conspiracy theories and censorship at an institutional level. Well, the report by the government's independent advisor for social cohesion, Dame Sara Khan, found that more than 75% of the public feel that they can't speak their mind. And she's called for a ban on demonstrations outside schools as a result. And some censorship. So she's trying to... Wait, Hold so, for thought, you're in trouble. Hang on a sec. Make, l l l Help me make sense of this, because maybe it's too well, early in the morning. Our guest I'm, so, I'm so sorry. We will be discussing this now with Times Radio presenter James Hansen and former host. This is what happens, you see. Sarah Khan is trying to get you to shut up a bit more often. Exactly. That's what's going on. So make this makes sense to me, Claire. She's <laughs> saying that people feel like they can't speak their minds, therefore she's bringing in a ban on protests. On the surface, yes. Right. Like, exactly but it is outside like. schools, specifically. It is outside school. I mean, I think that is a completely separate issue. So we don't um, want children to speak their minds. No, I think what it is, is demonstrations outside of schools. When schools are there to look after children, they are there to safeguard their rights, they are there to educate them. Why should they have to put up with individuals putting whatever their protest is outside of school? And I do agree with that. Schools shouldn't be used for political purposes in that respect. Are they? So, there are but, some, there are protests outside school gates, depending on right. what Batley the particular... Batley and Spen being a notable Batley and Spen one. Batley and Spen is the notable one. But even outside schools with regards to school meals or banning children from having crisps in their lunchbox or whatever it is, parents get angry, people get angry, the mob comes outside of a school and it shouldn't happen. They're there to be educated. So I think that is a completely separate issue Got you. from the 75% of people apparently who aren't willing to speak their mind. Not sure I, I think met them. I think, no. I think that's a bigger thing. We're going to have a moment now. Um, I, I do think we are increasingly in a place where a lot of people, James, are too scared to yes. sometimes speak their mind for fear of are they, people. Are they no, no, I'm going to pay you a real compliment now, and I mean this, because yeah. we've had many robust conversations. Always. and you do No, no, but... It, there has to be an argument that says that even if I would stand in front of you and disagree with everything mm. you said until the end of my my last breath, this is a democracy, right? And you I have don't. The right to but say there it. are people watching this right now who will say you can't say Jack anymore, mate. You can't say you can't open the door for a woman. You can't say you. I mean, lots of stuff. Well, you can. I know, Nick, but there's a lot of people who. Do you I, think I that you feel can't... like they can't? It's this issue yeah. of self-censorship. Yes. Yeah. We don't have censorship laws, or some would argue we do, given the hate speech law laws, whatever. But but it's self-censorship. It's people feeling like they can't express mm. themselves on a given issue, so they think, you know what? I'll just stay quiet. Now, sometimes that's not a bad thing. We have a lot of speech in this country. Sometimes people are deciding, I'm just going to stay out of this. John Dave just said in my ear, this is brilliant. So they go on social media and they put it on there and then yeah. China hacks it for you and then everybody true. gets it. Yeah. It's true, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah absolutely. But do you think there's sort of this sensitive? Do you think people are too. Not scared, but do you think they're, they're more cautious about what they say nowadays? I think they are, and I think social media does have a lot to play in that because you put any kind of comment out there and you will get 50% of the people piling in to tell you you're wrong. Some people might tell you you're right. Um, the likes of me doesn't care. No. They can say what they like to me, but I know that my friend, for example, doesn't need that level of scrutiny. She isn't in politics, she's not in the media, yes. and she feels really intimidated by it. So I should imagine that just the normal person on the street. Mm. But that's the bit I don't understand. It. If you can't, if you can't, it didn't, it, I've had a few times that, I'd like water off a duck's back now. Mm. But there are many people, and I have one moment of that, where you can't take it, so don't play ball. Don't get involved. Don't 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 be giving an opinion, I suppose. But the the point is, should but, you be able to? I mean, well, but some issue. people aren't even sharing opinions. Some mm, people yeah. are just living out their lives, perhaps not even aware that they're offending somebody. They're not even they don't even feel like they're taking a particular side on an issue, and yet people are getting criticised for it. But you are allowed to offend someone. I mean, that is yeah. freedom of speech. But equally, under freedom of speech, doesn't mean that you're free from a social media pile on if people disagree with you. That back and forth is part of freedom of speech. I can put a controversial opinion out there, someone can come back slagging me off. That's freedom of speech. Doesn't mean that, you know, you're free from the consequences of your speech. Just imagine what we'd be like if we listened to everybody that slammed us off. I do nothing. listen to it all. That's <laughs> I'll why shut up I have yes. to go home and have a nap. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right, <laughs> can we please show. talk briefly about this, this China thing, this big story? Um, you know, um, 41 
million people's personal details they reckon hacked before the 2021 election. 49 MPs are going to be told today they were hacked. Thoughts on this influence of China and technology? It's an important story. It is an important story. And I don't think anybody is any way surprised by this. China has an enormous reach. They have state actors willing to go in, hack into uh, data such as the Electoral Commission, which just goes to show that that data wasn't particularly being securely held either. So it's the flaws in our system. But they do have enormous power within the United Kingdom. We have allowed that to grow uh, without check. And we have given over some of our most crucial infrastructure, technological infrastructure, to the Chinese. So I think that we are going to see a rowing back of this, and not without uh, time. Um, be quite interesting in the chamber today to see what this statement is actually going to say. Is it definitely going to put, point the finger at Beijing? Oh, I think that remains to be seen. Do we need to be more robust, the United Kingdom? We do. I mean, Claire is absolutely right. This is shocking. It's not surprising. We have to accept that we have been for some time in, a, in an information cold war with China and indeed with Russia and I dare say other countries too. We have to wise up to the threat. And look, this happens, you know, many ways. There was a report recently that, you know, the American intelligence services have been trying to undermine Xi Jinping by spreading uh, allegations about members of his government on Chinese social media. This is the 21st century. It's an information cold war, and we have to be wise to it. And the point Claire made about some of the, you know, big energy infrastructure that we are now handing control over to China, we need to be very cautious about that. And look at the way they're targeting the MPs who are most outspoken about Beijing. Sure. And Claire, you used to work at the Home Office. Um, it's not fit How, for purpose, though, I'm often. Well, that's another debate altogether. How fit is the UK in terms of its cyber warfare? Where do we stand sort of globally on that? Are we at the head of our game or are we lagging behind? I think everybody's playing catch up. Techno technology moves on so quickly. Uh, the National Crime Agency and the security services do work incredibly hard. But this technology is evolving all of the time. Mm. And the problem is that social media platforms such as TikTok, which is Chinese based, is going to have such an influence in this country. It's already here. You can't put that genie in the bottle again. So we are behind the curve. But I think every country is also. Dave with says us. wrap 20 seconds, 10 each. Uh, Jeremy Hunt, 100 grand's not enough for people. The optics are rubbish, aren't they, man? I, if you listen to what he's saying, I understand the point he's making, but he's made it terribly. This man is a multi-millionaire. Yeah. Have they become rubbish? Well, they have become rubbish of politics, suddenly. <laughs> Come on, it's not rocket science. Don't say 100 grand is not a lot of money when it's three times the average and annual salary. Really quickly, you'd agree with James on that? I agree with James on that yeah. entirely. I yeah, thought yeah, it was per month. I'm gutted. <laughs> Crack there on. we go. Thank Thanks, you, gang. James Hansen and former Home Office advisor Claire Pearsall. Well, still to come on Talk Today, a number of MPs and senior peers have fallen victim to cyber attacks from China. It's been reported. More on that next. This is Talk Today. <laughs> we, you, you've had your auto cube hacked. It is 6.56. Good morning. Brilliant. <laughs>has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <listen. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans 
sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square because you just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> 40 yeah. minutes, 40... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail to, her. Yeah, we're that supposed to it was another that. era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. This is Talk Today with Jeremy Kyle and Nicola Thorpe. Good morning. It is 7 o'clock on Monday, the 25th of March. Certainly is. You would talk today, my friends, on TV, on radio, of course, online, your smart speaker. These are your top stories for Monday morning. Threat from the East. A group of MPs and peers will be told today that they have been the targets of a string of cyber attacks from China. Tip for terror. After a deadly attack in Moscow over the weekend, the UK is warned of the very real threat of Islamic State. And privacy for the princess. In the wake of Kate's cancer announcement, Kensington Palace releases a statement thanking well-wishers that asks the public to give her space. And it's a wet start to the week as rain pushes northwards across the UK. There will even be snow for some later. I have the details in the forecast very soon. Thanks, Naz. Just gone 7 o'clock. Let's get news headlines for Monday from Emily Rose Adams. Thank you, Jeremy. Good morning. Four men have been charged with terrorism in Russia following a concert hall attack that killed 137 people. In the last few hours, three of the men were marched into a court in Moscow while a fourth was pushed in a wheelchair. Russia claimed Ukrainian involvement. However, Kyiv says those allegations are absurd. Islamic State has since said it was behind the attack on the Crocus City Hall on Friday. Back here, and MPs are set to be briefed about the cyber threat posed by China, while some individuals will be told about direct threats against them. Sources close to the matter have said that the Deputy Prime Minister Oliver Dowden is expected to make a statement to Parliament later, in which he'll also outline that the personal data of more than 40 million voters was accessed last year. Well, counter-terrorism expert Major General Chip Chapman has told Talk Today the threats posed are concerning. Well, data harvesting and social engineering are prevalent things from all authoritarian states, both in their internal populations and externally. So everything, for example, on TikTok is a form of data harvesting by the Russians. If you get enough data about people, you can compromise people. So you have both um, cyber intrusions to try and steal things and to compromise things. And that's really what they're doing here. A man's been arrested on suspicion of murder at Heathrow Airport just hours after a man was hit by a car and killed in East London. The Metropolitan Police say officers were called to reports of a crash in Newham yesterday where a 35-year-old was found injured at the scene. The Home Office has launched a social media campaign in Vietnam to deter migrants from coming to the UK illegally. The campaign will use adverts on Facebook and YouTube to target people in the Southeast Asian country who may be considering making illegal journeys to the UK. An increasing proportion of small boat migrants are Vietnamese and they are one of the top 10 nationalities for migrants crossing the channel illegally. And drivers are being warned over long delays this week as more than 14 million Easter getaway trips are expected to take place. The RAC says journeys on some popular routes could take twice as long as normal as the bank holiday weekend coincides with the start of a two-week holiday for many schools. And rail travel will also be disrupted as Network Rail carries out engineering works. Those are headlines. I'll have another update in an hour's time.
That's another thing. Cheers, Two honey. weeks holiday. Go back to school, children. What have you done? Just been Christmas. Right, let's crack on. Uh, our top story today. This is really important. MPs set to be briefed on the cyber threat posed by China later after suspicions have grown that Beijing is behind a wave of cyber attacks against parliamentarians. This is everywhere this morning. They've also been accused of accessing the personal details of over 40 million voters in a hack on the Electoral Commission in 2021. Well, we're joined now by Lieutenant General Ben Hodges, former commanding general in the United States Army Europe and NATO senior mentor for logistics. Good morning, Lieutenant General. Um, is this a worrying concept? Also, this attack happened in 2021. Mm. What does it say about the state of British cybersecurity that it's three years later that we're actually blaming it on China? Well, I think the, the delay in the announcement uh, is more about uh, political considerations or <clears throat> thinking about the messaging versus a reflection on UK's cybersecurity. Uh, none of us should be surprised, of course, that China does this. And I thought General uh, Chapman, what he just said was, was very accurate. Of course, China in the information domain is, is doing all that they can to manipulate what happens inside uh, all of our countries. I mean, is it fair to say then, from a UK point of view, Ben, that, that in terms of the infrastructure, the technology, the internet and everything, that we need to be doing more? Talk in the States, of course, that TikTok, owned by the Chinese, we talked about the algorithm, is going to be banned. I don't know if that's possible. Do you think we should be doing more in the United Kingdom? Because people waking up this morning will go, what? They've got my details. How? That's the reality of this conversation. Well, you just put your finger on it, Jeremy. The, our government, our elected officials have got to speak to all of us as if we're adults and be very clear that there is a threat. There should be no debate that this is a threat from China because of their access that we have turned over, maybe without realizing it fully, uh, we have turned over access. I mean, whether you have uh, different devices in your home, uh, not just phone calls being intercepted, but much more sophisticated things. Of course, it's it's out there, and we shouldn't be surprised. Uh, we all want the convenience that comes with this, but we should be alive to the to the risks. And this is where I think our elected officials have to be very candid. No one will understand it. Like, well, they're not really a threat, but issue, Ben, isn't it? If you say to, I mean, I, would, I was going to ask you about that that level of threat. We'll hear through the media, oh, the, the terror level's risen. Mm. And people will go, ah, oh, whatever. They go, oh, my God, oh, my God. And the difficulty when you're a commentator or presumably in, in a position of power is if you say too much, you're going to freak people out. If you yeah. don't say enough, then are you being... It, it, it must be a difficult road to travel down, to be fair to them. Well, again, I think um, most people will accept uh, clear language from their elected officials if they're accustomed to elected officials speaking to them like they are adults. Uh, this, this is, I think, one of the most important responsibilities of our leaders. Of, of course, these are threats. Um, and of course, it's responsibility to make people aware that, hey, look, you need to be aware that there's a potential, uh, increased potential for threats. I mean, France just announced they're now at the highest level mm -hmm. of security because of, in the aftermath of what happened in Moscow, but also, I think, because of the warnings that were coming out from the U.S. and the U.K. in previous weeks. I think it would be irresponsible not to say you should be more careful. And yes, the government are taking steps to protect you. And Ben, can I just get further comment from you on those terrorist attacks in Russia. We know that Russia has charged four men over the killings of, of more than 130 people in that concert hall. Um, ISIS have claimed responsibility. I'm just intrigued. Just how exactly do ISIS claim responsibility for attacks of this nature? Is there an official spokesperson who either Russia or the US and other forces will accept responsibility for? Or do we just take the words of the four gunmen themselves? Well, of course, uh... In, here in the modern age, even ISIS-K, which was established almost uh, a decade ago, has Instagram uh, accounts. And so, you know, they put out not just video, but announcements to claim credit for things like this. And of course, you know, uh, all of us are remembering or getting smarter about who is ISIS-K. Uh, and they're the ones that uh, attacked a funeral in uh, Iran. Uh, they've attacked Russia before. Uh, they are responsible for the suicide bombing that killed 13 of our service members in Kabul. So they're not new to the scene. Um, I think that what, they're, what they've done 
is created or continuing their pressure on Russia because they see Russia, Russia has Muslim blood on their hands from Syria, Afghanistan, and Chechnya. So this is a longer campaign for them. But then, then oh, sorry, couldn't no. ISIS just claim responsibility for any terror attack, mm. any lone wolf attack of that nature? Could they not just, just claim it for themselves? I think, yeah, of course they could do that. But when you when you put this within the context of uh, General Carrillo, who is the U.S. commander of U.S. Central Command, testified before Congress last week that ISIS-K is capable and willing to do attacks in the U.S. and in uh, in Europe uh, now and into the future. So this is not something that they just popped onto the scene. The U.S. and U.K. provided warnings to Russia uh, back a couple of weeks ago of possible terrorist attacks. So to me, these kind of things give more credibility to ISIS-K's claim that they are, in I fact, see. responsible. Um, just, just quickly, Ben, really appreciate this. Chip quite rightly shot me down in flames. I want your view. There's a degree, a massive degree of cynicism about Putin, quite naturally, because he's in Ukraine. We were talking about this before we came on. False flag, that's been done before. Now, you're talking about, you know, this is, this is anti-Russia. This absolutely allows Vladimir Putin to treble, double or whatever he's doing his attacks on Ukraine. One wonders, if you're reading between the lines, it sounds a terrible thing to say when you think about the loss of life, but this rather suits the re rhetoric for Vladimir Putin, doesn't it? And that's why people are cynical. Well, I think the fact that he has zero credibility around the world outside of his own country uh, is is noteworthy. That was not the case even a couple of years ago. So we should keep this in mind when people are pressing, come on, we need to negotiate with Russia for a, a conclusion to this war in Ukraine. Remember who we're dealing with. And the security uh, apparatus in Russia immediately blamed Ukraine because they saw opportunity. They need to protect the great leader from uh, Dents and his uh aura as being able to protect the Russian people. I'm going to watch uh, Ramzan uh, Kadyrov, the Chechen leader. How does he react to this? Do the FSB overreact uh, heavily, uh, heavy handed against mosques, uh, Muslims around the Russian Federation? Um, this, this to me will be interesting to see. It's opportunity for us perhaps to drive a wedge between Chechnya and Moscow. Ben, well, thank you so much, Thank mate. you so much for joining us, Lieutenant General Ben Hodges there. Let's take another look at some of this morning's front pages now. It's our top story today. The Sun says Britain will officially blame China for the 2021 cyber attack today in Parliament. As the paper says, hackers access the personal details of 40 million UK voters. It's unbelievable, really, isn't it? The mirror revealing that a third of landlords have been forced to close pubs as early as 8pm due to costs and lack of custom. And finally, royals will come back stronger, claim the mail. As the paper reveals, King Charles hopes to attend Royal Ascot this summer, as well as some summer parties at Buckingham Palace. We're well, staying with royal news now, and over the weekend, the world was left shocked by the Princess of Wales' cancer diagnosis. In a personal message to the public, she ended months of speculation about her health and intrusions into her family's privacy. Kate's revelation marks an unprecedented openness about the health of our most senior royals, both the king and the future queen suffering with the same disease. But it comes alongside a strong request for privacy now for the princess, not least for the sake of her young family. We're delighted to be joined now by Charlotte Griffiths, editor at large. We found uh, the mail on Sunday. Charlotte, um, for me, uh, without doing it, Friday was one of those moments when I look back and think, where was I when I heard it? Mm. Um, uh, lots of conspiracy theorists, lots of people rowing back. If we go and we're very honest about it, it started with that photo. But now, surely, these idiots, these vile trolls that are saying it's AI-generated, something needs to be done about these people. It is beyond a joke now. This woman has cancer, has three young kids, waited till the Easter holidays, has gone to Norfolk. Can we please leave this woman alone? But her dignity, I have to say, shone through. She was so dignified and she was so clever to do it on, on the last day of the school term. Yeah, she was. And she decided two weeks ago that she wanted to do it. So can you imagine that agonising wait, seeing wow. the trolls, seeing the conspiracies getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and knowing that she didn't, for the sake of her children, she could not release the information any sooner than that Friday, which is a really dignified thing to do because she could have thought... OK, well, we told the kids now, let's just let's just end this horrible speculation online and release the video or record the video earlier. But she stuck to her guns. She really put her children first. Yeah. And as for the trolls that are still going, I mean, their claims are so uh, bizarre now. I'd prosecute, that, I prosecute, I You know, 
I just the thing that you, the idea that it's AI generated and the claim that sort of her wisp of hair moved in a fake. I mean, it's just it, it's just it's not people have really you have got, to do exactly have got cancer for God's sake. People have really got themselves riled up. I mean, a few people even messaged me on Twitter saying that I'd fallen for the the uh. Great Palace lie and conspiracy. I think no, it, it you talked speaks... about the I talked about it the weekend. No, 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 you talked felt... about the photo. You you said you didn't like her being bullied. I will absolutely support you on that. Thank you me. said 100% that photo's not right. And actually, in hindsight, if we're all honest, if they hadn't done this photo, but yeah. maybe it had to come out. But now, listen, there isn't anybody with any credibility who doesn't do anything but leave this poor woman alone. I'm sick and tired of hearing about, oh, we bully this and we bully that. This woman has cancer. Leave it. Seriously. Totally. And, and William has this huge phobia of the paparazzi, OK? Because in, in the bygone era, it was cameras on motorbikes chasing Diana. But with, but with Kate, you know, there isn't that anymore. But there is lunatics online and in their billions, not in their hundreds or tens like in the 90s. You know, there's billions of people obsessing over her. And they've just got to, they've just got to stop doing it now because the whole point of they that... They won't, will they, Charlotte? Well, I mean, the other thing she could do is not look at social media. But, I mean, sadly, we know that before her statement, she was, she was aware of all the rumours, whereas Meghan and Harry say, don't they? They say, oh, we never look at Twitter. They claim they never look at Twitter. But, but Kate actually does. That's the really sad thing. So my only hope for her is that she just stops looking at any social media, literally has her phone taken away from her, has a nice Easter break. I said this earlier, um, and, and I'm not jumping in, and I had cancer 10 years ago, preemptive, a preemptive, whatever. Preemptive. Um, Chemotherapy is 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 basically um, a process before the cancer has spread through the lymph nodes. I know that that's a right. that's a medical fact. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was quite a a positive thing from I mean taking it by pill or by intravenous drip. Horrible chemotherapy. Some mm. people lose their hair. Some people lose their skin. Horrible. Being poisoned to, to, in, in mm. effect. But I, I, I quite thought it was quite a positive thing. I think basically they'd found it probably yeah. removed it and we're making sure that it hadn't spread. I think I that's what the, it means it yeah. hadn't spread and there's yeah. hope and she and she did say I'll make I'll I'll come through this. She was pretty adamant about this, you know, I will be okay. So let's hope they've caught Imagine it early. That conversation you've had a daughter now. I, I... with children. That's yeah, the of saddest course. thing about this is she didn't want to tell her children. Yeah. Or, or or at least not this way. And I've got a friend who has had cancer and has never told her children. Wow. And you know, and the thing, the thought that she might, she may, she may well have had no intention of telling her kids at any point, but she had to because of how the world works, and it's that's really sad for mm. her, I think. What do you think about the bond between Charles and Catherine? I think it's been quite lovely, actually. Obviously, under yeah. horrendous circumstances, for them to share this common diagnosis and obviously position in the public how good eye. Is that picture on it's the front such of the a mail. lovely photograph yeah, of the two of them. It was obviously nice. taken it was at the James Bond premiere a few years ago. It's really but lovely. I think the bond with them is going to be even stronger to a sort of trauma bonded in this way. Totally. I mean, imagine going through this, these things at the same, exactly the same time in the same hospital. And one report today said he toddled out in his backless gown <laughs> to see him. I doubt to see her. I, I doubt so, the backless yeah, gown. I thought, I sort of thought maybe that's a little bit exaggerated, but the word toddled, you know, gives this image of him. You've got this a narrative. visitor, Mark. It's the king. <laughs> it's the king. king in his it's the king and his bottom exposed. No, I don't, <laughs> I think, I'm sure he was covered up, but this idea that uh, he's this sort of kindly grandfatherly father-in-law yeah. type figure in her life and a really strong support. It's so sweet, really. It's I, nice. I, I said to, to, to Nick this morning before we came on air, if you're a royalist, and I unashamedly am, you cannot overemphasize the seismic change for a commoner. I know she was... You know what I'm saying? To, in, and I think she is the future of the monarchy, and I mm -hmm. think the outpouring absolutely verifies that fact. And, and I think people should get behind her. Well, I know they are behind her. She's, some people used to joke she's more regal than the Queen, which I think is probably a bit unfair on our late Queen. But she is. She's so regal. She's so poised. She's so strong. And that was her first face-to-camera address to the nation, like a Queen. And to be doing that while you're feeling at your absolute worst, frail, weak, you know... You, you, she, the therapy. Yeah, you would have thought her first face-to-camera, one would have hoped, would be, you know, a really strong, sort of regal moment for her. But actually, in a way, she was stronger than ever. And I thought it was her best camera performance because we know she struggles a little bit to speak in front of the camera. She, she gets very nervous at audiences. But actually, that was her strongest. It's almost like having this sort of near-death experience, which cancer is for everyone. Yeah you know, has made her so strong uh, to, to do public addresses because she probably thinks, hell, what have I got to lose, you know? And what do you think this will mean for young women my age who, yeah. for whom think that cancer is 
unlikely, which is true, but might avoid going to get that checkup yeah. at the hospital because, never you know... Never avoid that. Man no. or woman, let me tell no. you, never, never, never Do avoid you think that. that with both her and Charles mm. being open about a cancer diagnosis, you, it will increase people's likelihood of actually going to get that thing checked at the GP? Definitely, and I think that was p part of her motivation, for sure. And um, we know that uh, William had that close connection with Bow Babe, and she'll yeah. definitely be thinking, look, there's, this is not something I want to do, but I guess if I at least do this address the nation, tell them in detail what's what's wrong with me and, and tell people that you can be 42 and you're not too young to have, have cancer. cancer. Somebody told me once, and, and, and not on the same scale, but the late, great Jay Goody, and people can laugh, when mm. she was so open about cervical Save my cancer. Mm. Right, well, well, I, I went and had a smear test early. Yeah. And, and, and they caught yeah, early stage yeah. and, 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 and I'm not being disrespectful to Jay Goody because the message she was great, she was what she was. But Catherine, I think that message is massive yeah. from her and, and King. I'm going to get a test after this. Are you? Are you yeah, really? I'm going to go get the Randox full health check. Oh, I've got three you. kids. I'm not 40 yet, but pretty close to it, sadly. <laughs> I'm going to go and get a full health check Good at 9.30am this morning. Good Amazing. For you. Good for you. Charlotte Thank Griffiths you so from the Mail on Sunday. Us. Thank you very much indeed. Still to come and talk today. Job centres will team up with the NHS to get over 9 million people on long-term sick back to work. Hurrah! And... Should have gone, gone to Specsavers. Specsavers. What does that mean? The optician company's van goes viral after it gets stuck by a street bollard. <laughs> <laughs> you can't brilliant. make up. Right, Ava Santina from Politics Joe and the Spectators. That's Freddie great. Gray. Take us through today's papers next. This is Talk Today. It is 7.19. Good morning. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And you're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't oh. going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat, go. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, oh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss him. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> that, that oh, a, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, 40 yeah. minutes, 40... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what did fail her. We're supposed to, supposed to was have another moved on from era. That. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth.
should have heard that, Lee. Welcome back to Talk Today. What is it, 722? We'll have the weather in just a moment. But here is what else is coming up on the programme. And she and I absolutely agree about this. This is rubbish. We do. Apparently, children who were bullies at school tended to go on to lead high-flying careers, uh, according to new research. Jeremy and I disagree on that, according to our school bullies, but that will be in the paper. No, we then. agree together. We can play. No, but we disagree with them. They don't go on to have high-flying no, careers. they don't. They get found out. Rishi Sunak, oh, let's move on, set to announce a £200 million pound investment into British nuclear security and energy. We'll speak to the nuclear minister, who knew there was one, Andrew Bowie, just after 7.30 this morning. And Brazilian UFC fighter Igor Severino has been disqualified after biting his opponent on the arm. More on that in the sport at 7.45. First, let's take a look at the weather. Naz, help me. Oh. <laughs> I'm just calling HR. Thank you. They're busy. They're busy. Crack on. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll give you the weather first. Right. It's looking quite <laughs> unsettled. Surprise, surprise. Once again. <laughs> Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Good morning. I'm going to describe today's weather and this week's weather as changeable. It's like a washing machine out to the west of the UK that's spinning round and round, throwing through lots of rain, uh, showers, brisk winds and snow expected for some over the next 24 hours as that rain hits the cold air that's sitting to the north of the UK. So it's all going on this week. Temperatures, you may have noticed over the weekend, have returned back to normal. It was a fine, bright weekend, though, so in the sunshine it didn't feel too bad, but it's probably going to be more noticeable uh, as we see the brisk winds develop across parts of the west and east through today. And we're seeing rain currently across western parts of England and Wales into the southwest of Scotland and Northern Ireland and the Republic. Northern Scotland and eastern parts of England, a bit of a patchy frost, but a mostly fine start. That rain steadily moves its way northwards, though. And as it starts to hit colder air, some wintry showers this afternoon across eastern parts of Scotland over the high ground. Northern Scotland mostly dry. Northern Ireland will see spells of rain, as will southern Scotland and northern England. And more rain will head towards parts of the west of England Wales, particularly heavy down towards Devon and Cornwall. I think for East Anglia and the South East, though, some bright or sunny spells developing, and actually not a bad day, mainly dry there, and temperatures around average for the time of year up to around 11 or 12 degrees Celsius. Then overnight, rain continues to steadily move its way further northwards. As you can see, there will be a rain hitting that cold air, and it will tend to significant amounts of snow above 300 metres across central and eastern parts of Scotland, where there's a warning from the Met Office, as uh, there could be up to around 20 centimetres over 300 metres, up to around uh, 2 to 5 centimetres across um, 200 metres. So the higher routes of Scotland could be affected by tomorrow morning. Train lines may be disrupted as well. Other than that, we are going to see uh, more rain and hill snow clear away from uh, parts of Scotland through tomorrow. Then it brightens up there. For Northern Ireland, though, there will be outbreaks of rain once again. So another wet one for Northern Ireland. But brighter skies for Scotland tomorrow afternoon. Across uh, England and Wales, there will be patchy rain across uh, many areas spreading eastwards. But it does look to turn brighter and somewhat drier across parts of the southwest later in the day. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Cheers, Naz. Now it's time to have another look through this morning's papers with Ava Santina from Politics Joe and The Spectator's Freddie Gray. Welcome back both. Ava, let's kick off with a story in The Sun um, about the government tackling the evolving threat of far-right and Islamic groups. Yes, this is a report by Dame Sarah Khan who's concluded that disinformation, extremism, harassment and intimidation have led people to self-censor their opinions. Now... I don't want to be uh, pessimistic, but that falls quite well into the sort of the, the conservative line that I think they've been trying to peddle, well, since Suella, well, actually since Priti Patel was Home Secretary, that um, people aren't allowed to say what they want to say anymore. And it's, you know, everyone's very constrained and tight-lipped and, well, it's, it's just a bit too on the nose, isn't it, I, I think, say. I think... Uh, and yet, about this, but our I protest th laws are the most restrictive. Yeah, but I do uh, think there is... Most outside yeah. of Russia. But I do think there is the point we were saying just now, Freddie, where people are more reticent to say what they feel nowadays for fear of reprisal. I do think that's true. Well, do you think that maybe they were planning to say things that perhaps they shouldn't have been saying? But it depends who judges what they shouldn't say. Oh, well, well if you put it publicly Ava's, anyway. Ava's world of people of things that you shouldn't have been saying. <laughs> I, think it, I think people... A lot of conversations you have with people now, they say, oh, I probably, I probably shouldn't say this. I think people are living in a kind of... Uh, under a sort of mental tyranny in their minds. Simon Cowell on X Factor used to say, and I quote, because he used to, you can't sing and I don't like your dress. You couldn't do that anymore. Why not? You couldn't 
do that extremist. even though you've traumatised me forever. I'm never going to be able to wear any other clothes and I can't no, sing. I think you're being serious. That's I think it's example. because the public's opinion of that has changed a lot. I don't think the public's stand bullies as much as they used to. Well, they're not entertained by it as much, no. I suppose. But you, you can read me now. Read me for filth now, Jeremy. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> read read it for filth. filth. Quick, I'm going to move on to the next I hear filth on my eyes. Morning. Filth, Freddie. Uh, Freddie. Freddie. <laughs> Freddie. Yeah, go, go, go. Don't read me for filth. Job really centres <laughs> will join with the NHS to get sick back into work. Yes, later. this is uh, Liz That's Kendall, uh, Shadow Work and Pension Secretary, uh, is talking about the biggest problem that Britain has. It's a huge problem of uh, 9.3 economically inactive people, something like 5.6 on long-term health benefits. Uh, this is the reason we don't have a productive economy, it's the, it's the major factor. The Tories say that they have a stick and carrot approach to dealing with it, they don't. That's why it's expanded so much under, under a Tory government. Liz Kendall's talking about it, saying, you know, let's make job centres lovely, friendly places where people don't feel scared to go. Nice idea, not sure it's going to solve the problem. Uh, we need serious welfare reform in this country, otherwise we're going to be bankrupt very, very quickly. And Ava, how can the NHS help in this way if they're not got further funding to actually get these people well? Or is it about finding jobs that suits the needs of the person who's on long-term sick? Well, I think this sort of feeds into the, the holistic approach to healthcare that Labour want to project for the holistic. upcoming election. Yes, so what they want is they want, they want a lot of preventative health care. So if you're instead of being signed off sick and put on medication the way that you are now, if you've got a mental health complaint, they would like you to be referred to a specialist. They'd like you to, you know, to have your hand held back into work, which is fantastic in, in principle. But, you know, I would, you know, if I was on the other side, if I was on the, uh, the, uh, the government benches, I would say, well, how much is this going to cost? Because this would probably be one of the most expensive ventures, actually more expensive than the Green Pledge that they scrapped yeah. a, a couple of months Very ago. Very briefly, because we're not, I genuinely believe that what they should do, and I've said it and I get scowled at, is, is um, accept absolutely the people that are disabled and mentally ill, but there is a large number of people on long-term benefits who could go to work. And I would be spending the money on encouraging them to work in the NHS rather than importing people from across the world to do the Well, course. I think that that's I don't an overly agree simplistic with... analysis there. I don't Jeremy. think it is oversimplistic. We're paying people to sit at home who shouldn't be sat at home. But would you rather be looked after by somebody who wants to be here and is from abroad or somebody who does not want to be working in the NHS? Then you have to NHS. change the theory that it's OK not to work and make people want to work. Yes. In my humble. Well, we're going to move on now. Yes. Um, Ava. I can't get this story. I don't understand it either. Apparently, playground bullies end up earning more by the time they're middle-aged. Yes. So no apparently way, if you, Not in my uh, school. No. If it, really? Rebecca Do Jones. You know what okay. No. No. So we were talking about this... Uh, you can't be naming bullies on there. I do we were talking about um, a bully. I got it was nothing. We, we were talking about this upstairs, and uh, well, I was saying my very controversial opinion, which is I don't think that people in Westminster were bullied enough at school. And <laughs> oh, I think, that's terrible. I, I think that sometimes it's, it, it's good when you're, when you're younger to, to have... You know, to, to be told that you're annoying or to be told to stop certain behaviours because otherwise it bleeds into your adult life. And then, you know, the next thing you know, you're 35, you're at the bar, you've been talking at someone for, you know, two hours, and they think I'm you're annoying. I'm not sure. I, I sort of believe in justice, don't you? Don't you think people get found out? Well, you think that naturally the kind of karmic effect of being a bully means that you wouldn't actually be earning that much money as you're older. I well, don't no, know. because they'd be more bullish, wouldn't they, in the workplace? I'm not advocating, Wrong word. I'm not advocating for someone to be, you know, I'm not physical violence or anything like that at school. But, you know, I think, you know, just a, a little bit of um, humiliation when you're six or seven, I think this it goes what, a long way. Uh, wow, told, I don't even, I can't even believe you've said that. Ava told me she thought I wasn't bullied enough. <laughs> What, what did you say? Said, she said she that's thought I needed said. to be bullied more. Did you? You, what, you weren't like that at school, though. That's not That's Off not Off camera, she torments me. It's terrible. <laughs> she wants to talk about it, Freddie. Yeah, I do. I do need, you want to go on the long-term sick? I need therapy. You've been affected by the way benefits. that Ava Santina talks to you. That's shocking. Um, this is another thing, Freddie. We're going to yes. shoot through this. Front page of The Guardian. Almost 9,000 overseas nurses a year are leaving the UK amid a surge... I do need my glasses in nurses quitting the understaffed NHS. Yes, it's another depressing NHS story. Um, I mean, a lot of them are going to Australia again. It seems Australia... I, I mean, I might go and get my health care in Australia. Uh, Long way doctors, to go for doctors, a doctor's appointment. Nurses are there. Uh, it's, it's, it's another problem of uh, nobody wants to work in the NHS, it seems, or increasingly people aren't happy working there, um, despite huge amounts of government spending in the NHS. Um, so, yeah, Are we not surprised really that nobody wants to work in the NHS? Well, I mean, if you can go and earn a be much better wage in Australia and you can enjoy the sun while you're there, I mean, I'd probably take that, wouldn't you? Overworking in a, in a London hospital where you're probably overworked, overstretched and underpaid.
Eight. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to move on to the next story now, Freddie. The Jeremy's. <laughs> you, you lead this, Jeremy. I can't. Is this the, is this this one? Yes. The man spotted a spec savers van being hoisted by a submerged um, bollard. Have we got the picture? This is this is this is this is a. a have you got the picture up? This is specs. Oh, look at that. If you just, you're on the radio, this is a spec savers van. It's been absolutely categorised. I mean, what do they call those city centre bollards? It's gone part, straight over the top of it. It's gone straight up through the back. And that's a company that says that you should wear glasses, which is really good, isn't it? Being cynical, do you think this might be a setup? I think <gasps> it looks... It's got, I was about to say that, and I was worried that I was going to be cynical. I think it looks like it's got a hallmarks of PR stuff. I mean, should have gone to Spec Savers is the slogan. <laughs> it writes itself. You see, you lot are well ahead of me. You're telling me that that's been set up. Well, it's in the middle of it. Princes Street. I mean, I don't understand Where's how Where's Princes managed... Street? In, in Edinburgh. In Edinburgh. Uh, I don't understand how he managed to get there. I mean, it, it looks like somewhere he shouldn't have been allowed to park. <laughs> or she. Sorry, I don't know. Really <laughs> and why did they stop at that exact moment? The van moment, has though? a pronoun. What do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't want to speculate either way. But, um, speculate! It's, thank you very much. <laughs> it's, uh, it certainly looks good for them, doesn't it? Uh, Dave, thank you very much, Steve. Dave is saying, do comments. It just does I mean, what are we talking about? Which comments, Dave? Help us out. All right, anyway, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Freddie and Ava, you're very, very it's kind. It's falling to pieces. Uh, it is, well, it's not falling to pieces, but we're, 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 doing, we're doing everything that we possibly thank can. Thank you to Ava and Freddie. They will be back in an hour. But you've been getting in touch mm. all morning with your thoughts and opinions. You've been emailing talktoday at talk.tv. You can tweet at talktv or text the word talk plus your message to 8722. Now, a review by a government advisor has called for a ban on demonstrations outside schools mm. after the treatment of a Yorkshire teacher who showed a cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad. Now, that was quite a while ago, wasn't wasn't it? It was a couple of years ago. Yeah. Uh, do you think it's right to ban demonstrations outside schools? Well, Cynthia got in touch to say, I don't think that scaring kids is a good way of getting your message out there. Schools should be off limits. Vivian, it's not right to ban demonstrations at all. Free speech is a right, not a privilege. Hugo, protests outside schools disrupt classes. It achieves nothing other than harming kids' futures. And Tina says, I totally understand the right to protest, but demonstrations outside schools are ridiculous to me. It accounts for nothing more than threatening behaviour. Talk today at talk.tv. Text to 87 treble... Treble two? Absolutely what troublesome. to my brain? It doesn't work. Well, to Westminster now, and the Prime Minister will declare a national endeavour to secure the future of the UK's nuclear industry today, including investment in jobs and communities. Uh, joining us now is Nuclear Minister Andrew Bowie. Andrew, a very good morning, 25 to 8. Thank you for joining us. Um, interesting for us, the government today, uh, Rishi Sunak's off to Barrow in Furness. He's talking about uh, nuclear energy on the day that Keir Starmer's going to Wales to talk about the great British energy company and banging on about green. You're not both talking about the same thing. Isn't nuclear one of the major answers? And why haven't we been talking about this sooner? Brilliant. Well, it is. You're absolutely right. Nuclear is one of the major answers. There is no net zero without nuclear. It's clean, it's safe, it's secure. It delivers uh, energy security and independence, and it will also deliver uh, tens of thousands of new high-wage, high-skilled jobs in parts of the country where these things are at a premium. So that is uh, what we are very pleased to be announcing today. £750 million investing in our civil and defence nuclear capabilities to upskill the workforce, to get those people into the jobs that we require, to make these dreams a reality. And, you know, whilst it's all very good that Keir Starmer's late to the party in endorsing nuclear, and Ed Miliband's had his Damascene conversion when it comes to that technology as, as being a part of the mix, we need to keep our foot on the gas here. We need to ensure there's no uh, depletion of effort when it comes to ensuring that we have the nuclear generating capacity to deliver our energy needs and also ensure we have the skilled workforce to deliver our uh, defence requirements as well. Um Andrew, uh, Rishi Sunak has been saying that obviously this is a big push for defence and security in the UK. But in reality, is this not just a replacement for the Vanguard system that was already in place and there were repairs that were due to take place anyway? Mm. Look, there was always going a scheduled uh, upgrade to our uh, nuclear defences. That is uh, only right and proper that these things are kept under review. Uh, what we're announcing today is because of our AUKUS programme, because of our Dreadnought programme, which is the new uh, era 
of uh, our continuous at sea deterrence, the vessels that will carry our, tri our, our nuclear missile system, that we're going to need the workers to actually deliver that. That's why the Prime Minister is in Barrow, which is going to be the focal point of all this, to ensure that we have those people that are able to deliver that. We keep the safety and security of this country under constant review. It's absolutely right and proper that all the systems that we have are uh, fit and proper for the era in which we live, and that's why we're upgrading our, our military nuclear defences as we are uh, at the minute. Um, I really appreciate you coming on and we can debate about, you know, he's talking about green energy, you're talking about nuclear energy. Uh, you, I just want to pick you up on three more things, a couple of questions, quick questions. You just talked about the security and stability of this country is paramount to this government. I was brought up to believe that a Tory government was all about secure borders, a strong military, low taxation, right? It has to be said that the state of our military, and when you look at the situation in Russia, you look at what's happening in terms of technology with China, 14 years of Tories, and I never thought I'd say this, the state of our armed forces, my friend, are a complete and utter disgrace. Ben Wallace, who used to be the Defence Secretary, has said as much. Why doesn't this government do what's right and make our defences stronger? Our defences are incredibly strong. We have some of the most capable and well-resourced armed forces in the world. We're standing 2.3% GDP on defence with a commitment to get 2.6%. Uh, we have a military that's able to do uh, far more than just about any uh, comparable military. We're the second highest defence spender in NATO and I've got absolute faith and confidence in our armed forces, in our security and our intelligence community to keep this country safe. We're continuing to increase the money that we give to them as well as increasing their powers through the different acts of parliaments that we passed over the past few years. It is the first role of any government Government to ensure the safety and security of the country uh, to which they are elected to govern. That is something that this government takes incredibly seriously. We always have and we always will. Uh, Andrew, can I just get your quick comments on um, something that your colleague Jeremy Hunt said over the weekend? Apparently, a £100,000 salary a year is not a huge salary. Do you think he's right? I think it's a very good salary and I think as a result of this pay uh, negotiation the train drivers should now accept it, get back to work and let this country get on, let the people of this country get on with their lives. We've uh, lived under the burden of rolling strikes on the railways for far too long. This is a very good deal. I think it's time the drivers accept it and get back to work and let people move on. Joe, I'm not talking about train drivers, I'm talking about people in general. You think that £100,000 is not a huge salary? I think it's a very good salary. Andrew Bowie, thank you very much indeed. Andrew Bowie, the nuclear minister there, live in Westminster with a slight satellite delay. Um, can I just say something, right? You can. That, to me, and I'm not being disrespectful. James is back. Uh, Poppy Coburn as well from The Telegraph. It, and I've worked with you for six months, right? Yeah. Answer the damn question. <laughs> do, do these people know? And I understand <laughs> politicians don't. But it, And here's me saying something I never thought I'd say. Do you honestly think, Andrew Bowie and Jeremy Hunt, that everybody who's north of Surrey, because strangely enough, there is quite a lot of space, is not going to look at that and go, a hundred grand, are you, having a, are you having a giraffe? You're making us out to be fools. The optics of that sort of answer, Poppy, is why this... Actually, all politicians, people are just fed up, man, aren't they? Well, this is exactly it, Jeremy. Astonishing it's, it's, to me. It's the optics. And now, I'm obviously all for prosperity. I want everyone yes. to have a big salary. I, I don't know about you. Everyone feels poorer. Inflation is that completely out of control. But having someone like Jeremy Hunt come on after that disastrous budget and tell you that 100 grand a year is you not a big his salary. for 16 million. It just... I'm million million Jeremy Hunt. Yeah. But, yeah. But, but even that, you'd go, do you know what? Prices are so high in Surrey. It's about 670 grand to get a five bed, four bedroom house or whatever, three bedroom house. So I get that. But I also understand that if you're working in a factory, you're on the breadline, you're a jam, it's just about managing north of Watford Gap because, hey, there is quite a bit of country up there. That's a ridiculous comment, but you don't hear that, do you, Nick? You don't, no. don't say that. I think the point is that £100,000 is a huge salary, but sadly doesn't go as far yeah. nowadays yeah. as it would have done when they came into power. Everyone has cost of living pressures. Even if you're on a really good salary, that means probably you're in a bigger house, your mortgage repayments are bigger, you're paying yeah. more tax. Childcare costs, maybe you've got kids in Alimony. private school. You oh. may be not left. <laughs> Sorry, that's a slightly cynical comment. Then You're probably me. not left with a lot of money at the end of each month. But do you know what? Those are good problems to have. Yes, but, but I'm with Poppy. Don't, you know, by, by saying it like that, 
It's bad you, politics. You, you, you categorise everybody who's successful in a terrible way. Oh, well, it's all being like successful. they think they're going to lose the next election. It's remarkable. <laughs> they, just sure. they just want to make it worse. <laughs> they think they're finished. We're going to move on to this story now, Poppy, to get your thoughts on um, the announcement today that, that China was behind uh, a hack attack mm. on the UK. Now, this hack took place in 2021. Uh, we were speaking to a guest earlier saying that it, it's not actually taken three years to find out who was behind it. But it's there's something about the political climate at the moment that makes yeah. it feel like it's OK to blame China. What is that change and why today are they announcing this? I personally think that we are following the lead of America here, right. which is uh, with all the discussions that have been going on with TikTok and whether or not there's some kind of CC involvement within the app, I now think that Britain feels that it can now openly say that China is perhaps intervening in our politics in some way. I mean, this hack affected 40 million people I saw on the front page. You were saying earlier, which is probably million. the numbers of people that will vote in the next election. <laughs> well, in yeah, terms quite, of percentage. Quite. I yeah, mean, this, this, is, this, register, is, yeah. this is a really serious piece of interference. I mean, we were you know, talking a few weeks ago about what happened with Russia hacking the plane when the Defence Secretary was on it. But this is 40 million British citizens. Yeah. There's like 43 MPs, so people within the Houses of Parliament have also been involved. We had the situation last year where Chris Cash was arrested. He's obviously denied allegations. He was accused of spying for the Chinese state. He was working for Alicia Cairns. She's head of the Foreign Secretary Committee. So you think if there's this level of interference from a state that someone like Ian Duncan Smith is hostile to British interests, it does make you think, well, what's our plan to fix any of this? Yeah. I don't really think there is one. James, will this kind of news make you change your social media activity? Well, I'm not on TikTok. Okay. But I mean, the question. Are you on TikTok? I am, yes. The question now for government is, should, should the government ban TikTok? Because yeah, in America, they're yeah, looking yeah, yeah. at MPs can't... No, sorry, ministers. Ministers aren't, allowed, MPs to aren't, use aren't allowed to use TikTok, it, but MPs can. But MPs can. But, I mean, these are the serious questions. They're allowed there to are. use WhatsApp and then they delete them all and nobody yeah. knows the truth. <laughs> oh, God, I'm turning into a cynical man. Oh, <laughs> Turning <Lord>. into... <laughs> it's but, your fault, Corporal Thorpe. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, do you think that... Do you think people might have a, be a bit apathetic towards this because they're like, well, I've already signed up. Mm. I've already sh shown them my face. I've given them my details. I think people what are very kind of, I don't want to say naive, but maybe too blasé about the security threats. I mean, for example, you know, you, you speak to people about Alexas, for instance, and I was the kind of person who for years used to say, I'm not going to get an Alexa because I don't want the CIA listening to me. Yeah. And people would say, yeah, but if you've done nothing wrong, what have you got to worry about? Well, actually... Information in the wrong hands, whether it's in the hands of a government or some kind of hacker, is a very sinister thing. We need to wise up to this threat, both as a country and as individuals. Absolutely. I, 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 I sort of, yeah, I'm sort of with you. The, the thing I was talking about earlier, Poppy, well, both of you actually, is what are you supposed to do, though? If you're, and I'm not sticking up for ministers or officials or whatever. If you say, listen, the security threat has been heightened... Everybody's going to run around going, you're warmongering, I'm scared, whatever. And if you say nothing, then you get mm. accused. And, and I guess treading that middle path is quite difficult, right? What are you supposed to say to people? But people have to take responsibility. Right. I mean, I, I, yeah, the TikTok. I can't have Alexa because I fell out with her. I hated <laughs> her voice and she I just think, answered me back. I couldn't I have think it. a lot of it is actually having Nicola well. Thorpe in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think people, people kind of just assume they're being spied on anyway. I mean, again, it's like... Mm. Oh, we, everybody makes jokes, like, oh, my Alexa's spying me, TikTok's stealing all my information. Oh, well, it doesn't really mean anything. But I think if it actually comes out that this is influencing our elections, I mean, mm. I'm not really sure there's much to be done about this next election. I'm I just going to be any surprise results coming Chinese up here. But if our politicians okay. feel in some way threatened into taking positions that they wouldn't otherwise hold, I mean, that has very serious ramifications for democracy. So maybe we shouldn't just think about it, what it means for us as citizens, but what it means for our politicians, who are actually making decisions every day about the future of the country. Well, that's a lot more worrying. I also find TikTok dances really, really irritating. <laughs> <laughs> just ban them. Good for national security, better for my sanity. Maybe that's why ministers have been banned, because oh, it's all doing, doing those dances. Is that dances. the thing my daughter used to make me do? Or we all have to do that in the background? Yes, and China are going to use it against you one day. Well, Listen, I, I have committed war crimes for, <laughs> against dancing. I'm sure I could be absolutely <laughs> Yes, done indeed. You are dance. a threat to our national security. Yeah, well, well, thank well, you so much, James Hansen from Times Radio. Thank you, gang. And Poppy Coburn from The Telegraph. Here he is. Well, do stay with us. Jim White's got your sports. Yes, I have, guys. Nicola, good morning to you. Coming up this morning, England defenders Kyle Walker and Harry Maguire have been ruled out of Tuesday's friendly with Belgium, uh, making way for some new faces in the senior squad. We'll see what happens with that. Andy Murray knocked out of the Miami Open after a dramatic defeat against 23-year-old Thomas Makach. And Jasmine Paris, wow, 
She becomes the first woman to complete the Barclay Marathons, a 100-mile race that reaches heights roughly twice Mount Everest. We won't be going anywhere, though, because we are staying right here. This is Talk to Today on a Monday morning. Good morning, everybody. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't oh. going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. All Rosie. right, Oi, oi, treat, go. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <Where is> it? <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, yeah. minutes, four... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what did fail her. We're supposed to, supposed to was have another moved on from era. That. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to your talk today. It is 7.50. Now, England defenders Kyle Walker and Harry Maguire have been ruled out of Tuesday's friendly with Belgium. So who will be appearing on the pitch in their place? I love the, I love that enthusiasm. He's here, the first voice of sport, Jimmy White. Um, I, so... <laughs> will you be joining them? Well, I'll certainly be looking in because... Did you watch the I, game against Brazil? I did. No uh, end product. From start to finish, I watched it, Jeremy. I mean, 1-0 Brazil on the night. Uh, the first Wembley defeat for England in 21 games. Yeah. Um, something's still missing, isn't it? I mean... Well, you, Harry you know, Kane was missing at the top of the pitch. If we're he was missing, honest. yeah, of course. But um, well. when you start a match with, with people like um, Phil Foden and, and Jude Bellingham, yeah, England fans who pitched up on the night, and there were many, expect more, I think. And there's disappointment all around. I mean, you, you could tell the longer it went on, Jeremy, the more I thought, England are not going to score in this. And uh, what do you know, Brazil nicked in with one at the end. I thought, I thought it was really interesting, and you're, you're, you're far more onto this than I am. They obviously set out, which I think a lot of teams will in the, in the European Championships, and he has to be aware of this, to just kick lumps out of Jude Bellingham. I think that's the first thing that should be said. Well, that's what, yeah. Yeah. Dave tells me, and he's right, Foden to get a touch in the Brazil box, right? Mm. I think they missed Saka on the left. For me, with Saka on the left and Foden on the right and Harry Kane up front with those two diamonds behind, I think you're laughing. I thought Chilwell was ineffective. I think they massively missed Terence yeah. Trent Derby. Nicola, I think we're listening to and looking at Southgate's replacement, aren't we? 
I yeah, mean, I know. Yeah. I mean, you're you right. should step Across up, this, my friend. Uh, I think Terence Trent Darby. I called him Terence. I think he. I think he was a miss. I thought Chilwell wasn't great. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, but but for me, the movement down the left with Saka, there was there wasn't enough. Do you want to swap seats here? No, yeah. no, no, no. Shut yeah. up. No, Sorry. this is good. I'm enjoying yeah, it. Talk to me about tennis. What's uh, happened with Andy Murray? Tennis, Nicola. And just a footnote to that. I don't think England are as good as many people think they are. Do you not? Maybe that's the thing. Maybe that's the thing. Saying that as a anyway. sportsman or an analyst? I'm being serious. Do you not uh, think they'll win? No, as an analyst, I'm totally professional, as you know. <laughs> Andy Murray, fellow Scot, uh, knocked out of the. Miami Open in the early hours of this morning, but he didn't go with a whimper. I mean, to be fair to him, 5 7, 7 5, 7 6, uh, beaten by ranked number 60, Thomas Makach. That's not bad, Nicola, to be quite honest. He, he got through a couple of, couple of matches. He's pushing on, as you and I are, Jeremy. He's 36, he's still in there fighting, and he, he, he won't quit, you know, which I admire hugely. I don't. Uh, we, we had this discussion. I, what do you reckon? You don't. Uh, I think good for him. Like, who's to say that you should quit at your peak? I say keep going if it makes sense. No, no, happy. I know. And I'm not exactly. trying to be difficult. These but guys the are like guy won Wimbledon. He won the Australian. He was Long world time ago. number one. Long why, time ago. Why are we excited? Or is he excited if he wins a challenger tour? Of, I think he was... Because he enjoys the sport. But how, <laughs> else could be, how else could anyone fault him for what he's doing? No, he's I, still performing. He's still playing at a pretty damn high better. level. All I'm saying, Jimmy, is I think he's better than it. And in the end, you can tarnish your legacy. No problem. I'll, I'll pass never, that. I'll I've pass never had a legacy, which is why I'm Speaking still Speaking of tarnishing legacies, somebody's <gasps> yeah. had a tattoo, James. Well, James Chin. James! I well, no, I like that, I Nicola. Very, Thank you. I got very, James, very formal there. Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, Jim, tell us why uh, Igor Severino <laughs> has been disqualified for biting Andre Lima in the UFC. Igor Severino bit Andre Lima on the bicep, James? apparently, in a clinch. There it is. There it is, uh, and then decided to uh, get a tattoo, I think, uh, of the actual bite mark. Severino was disqualified. There's a touch here of Holyfield Tyson, as you remember. Yep. Remember all these years ago, uh, Jeremy, when uh, uh, Evander Holyfield's ear was bitten by Mike Tyson. A touch of uh, Luis Suarez against um, Branislav yes, Ivanovic. that's true. Or even against Cellini when he came back for a rematch. Uh, but yes, a bit of biting in UFC. And finally, and I think we've saved the best till last. Well, yeah. Last Nicola thought this. I can't this wait for this. Unbelievable. British ultra runner Jasmine Paris, who hails from Midlothian outside Edinburgh, the first woman to finish the Bartley Marathons, held in Tennessee, 100 miles long, five 20 mile loops, all done at once, no break. As you can see at the end, it took it out of her, but why wouldn't it? Um, now, there's a cutoff time of 60 hours to complete this. She'd tried it before and had failed. She did it in 59.58.21. Now, help me understand this, Jim, This is brilliant. Because I read this in the green room, room honest, earlier. This is great. And I thought, well, 100 miles yes. in 60 hours. It's not great. That's not great, is it? Oh. <laughs> it's, not, it's not very fast. No, but the initially, when Nick was told 100 miles, she went... But you can run a mile in four minutes. That's rubbish, man. Yes. I think when That's you're into crazy. the fourth 20-mile loop, Nicola, you'd realise I might have taken on too much here. I see. Uh, well, why maybe. not just walk the whole way? Well, she could, that's what I would do. But yes. you, don't forget, you've got to come inside 60 hours. Got you. So, okay. uh, and she only just made it. She's the first woman to finish it at her third attempt. But one of the most bizarre aspects of this, the race officially begins, apparently, this race when everybody is put through it in an incredible fashion, when the race director lights a cigarette, Amazing. apparently they all look at the race director and he gives a... <laughs> you can start now. That's brilliant. Can you imagine if they, they started did. Formula One with all that petrol around? Uh, <laughs> great shout. That's what they should do. <laughs> yeah, just, just get, the what's he called? It? Uh, Bernie Eccleston, does it? Yeah. A cigarette. On your goal, lads, an explosive start. Thank, Thank you, you, Jimmy. Thank you so much to Jim White. Still James. To James, well, James, give it his formal you, title. Uh, now, should we be alarmed about a raised terror threat in the UK following the attack in Moscow? Well, former chair of the Defence Select Committee, Tobias Elwood, is here with us next. This is Talk Today. It is 7.56. Good morning. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat go. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, not a woman, trans woman. It's a map.
Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <is it? laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <you've got> to... <laughs> Yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did to, fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. This is Talk Today with Jeremy Kyle and Nicola Thorpe. Hey, very good morning to you, my friends. It's just gone 8 a.m. on Monday the 25th of March. You're with Talk Today on TV, radio, online and your smart speaker. Here are your top stories this morning. Threat from the East, a group of MPs and peers will be told later today that they've been the targets of a string of cyber attacks from China. Tipped for terror after a deadly attack in Moscow over the weekend, the UK is warned of the very real threat of Islamic State. And privacy for the princess in the wake of Kate's cancer announcement. Kensington Palace released a statement thanking well wishers, but again asking the public to give her space. And it's a wet start to the week as rain spreads northwards across many parts of the UK today. And for some, there will be snow. Yep, that's right. I'll have the details in the forecast a little later. No. Cheers, Naz. Now it's time for the headlines with Emily. Thank you, Nicola. Good morning. Four men have been charged with terrorism in Russia following a concert hall attack that killed 137 people. Three of the men were marched into a court in Moscow while a fourth was pushed in a wheelchair. Russia claimed Ukrainian involvement. However, Kyiv says those allegations are absurd. Islamic State has since said it was behind the attack on the Crocus City Hall on Friday. Well, Lieutenant General Ben Hodges, former commanding general United States at the United States Army, has told Talk Today that it's highly likely ISIS-K were behind it. This is not something that they just popped onto the scene. The US and UK provided warnings to Russia uh, back a couple of weeks ago of possible terrorist attacks. So to me, these kind of things give more credibility to ISIS-K's claim that they are, in fact, responsible. 
Back here in MPs are set to be briefed about the cyber threat posed by China, while some individuals will be told about direct threats against them. Sources close to the matter have said that the Deputy Prime Minister Oliver Dowden is expected to make a statement to Parliament later in which he'll also outline that the personal data of more than 40 million voters was accessed last year. Meanwhile, and the Chancellor Jeremy Hunt has said his party is committed to keeping the triple lock system on state pensions if the con Conservatives win the election. The pledge means the increase is the highest of average earnings growth or inflation or 2.5%. Or well, Labour's yet to reveal if the triple lock will feature in its manifesto. It's emerged Britain's leading universities now get most of their fees from foreign students as they become increasingly reliant on overseas money to stay afloat. Dozens of unis, including Oxford and Cambridge, only get a minority of their income from British students, with some prestigious institutions getting more than three quarters of their fees from abroad. Well, universities insist the ability to attract rising numbers from overseas is a sign of success. And top scientists in Switzerland have announced they'll soon look into whether invisible ghost particles actually exist. Those behind the major CERN Hadron Collider project will hold experiments to look into the mystery of ghost particles, which could help us greatly advance our understanding of the true nature of the universe. They say their new technology is a thousand times more sensitive than previous devices. You're up to date. I'll have more headlines in an hour's time. Thanks, Emily. Now, forgive me, I think Jeremy Kyle is looking for a what ghost. What a lot of old tosh. Honestly, really? <laughs> Honest, I could do a joke, but we'll be fired. I know, I was thinking... Do you know the excited. joke about the ghost? Yes, I do. You d I've told you that, haven't I? Yes. Oh, he said I was at the back of the auditorium. I thought you... Anyway, moving swiftly upon. Uh, thank you, Emily. Back to this top story this morning. Now, this is, I mean, if you're waking up, this is everywhere. MPs set to be briefed in the Commons later on the cyber threat posed by China after suspicions that Beijing is behind a wave of cyber attacks against parliamentarians. They've also been accused... Uh, accessing the personal details, check this, of over 40 million of us via the electoral roll in a hack on the Electoral Commission three years ago in 2021. Well, we're joined now by Conservative MP and former chair of the Defence Select Committee, Tobias Elwood. Good morning, Tobias. Um, this hack happened in 2021. Why are we only hearing about it now, the fact that um, the government are blaming China for that hack? Uh, that's a really good question. It's, we'll probably hear more about that uh, today. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to confirm uh, where this attack uh, came from. Uh, don't forget, this isn't just happening to the UK. It's happening to other countries uh, as well. So there's an awful lot of sharing of data to confirm what is happening here. We're in this difficult situation that we trade with uh, China. But at the same time, China is pursuing an alternative interpretation of our global order, and they are teaming up with Russia and Iran uh, to exploit perhaps our timidity in protecting that world order. We've seen that in Ukraine. We've seen that in the Middle East uh, as well. And of course, what's the uh, going to happen with Taiwan as well? And we've become increasingly exposed because of our way of life, because of our embracing the digital sphere. It becomes easier, therefore, uh, to influence uh, political opinion and what's happening to so uh, uh, economic discord as well, getting us to argue with each other because of what we're reading uh, online and, of course, uh, to actually cause disruption through those cyber attacks as well. So I very much welcome the government's statement here today. Uh, I would like us to move faster, though, to be able to call China out and stand up to China. Uh, it's interesting, isn't it, Tobias, because um, from as much as the last two years, whenever I've spoken to you on this show and other shows, you've always talked about that threat of China. And I guess in the early days, I, that makes it sound like it's a long time ago, people were like, oh, come on, you're all warmongering. We talked about China, we talked about that axis with, with Russia and Iran, and it's almost like it's coming home to roost. And what I find, I mean, I was saying earlier, and I'd love your take on this, right? Presumably, politicians and officials find themselves in a difficult position because if you jump up and down and say, you know, the security terror level threat's awful, everybody panics and whatever, you don't say enough and it takes a long time, people can accuse you of not being on the ball. What does this government do? For example, we hear TikTok is about or trying to be banned in America. Is that something we should do in the United Kingdom? What do you, you're an expert in defence, how do we fight against this cyber warfare as a country? Well, the only way we can fight against cyber warfare and against any enemy is by working 
any competitor is actually by working with our allies. We've all got to do the same thing. Otherwise, China is able to exploit the differences that we have. And that is the big challenge that we face. We need a China strategy. We need to recognize that this is China's century, that uh, in the next few decades, it could easily challenge or indeed overtake the United States militarily, economically, technologically as well. How do we then manage that? We have entered another Cold War. We've discussed that in the past. The difference between this Cold War and the last is that China relies on trade with the international community to keep its country growing. But we've done, not done enough to confirm the, the rules that China needs to uh, apply, that needs to follow, like the rest of us don't do. If we start doing that, China will start to conform and play by international rules rather than exploiting them and pursuing a different interpretation, taking Russia and indeed Iran and other countries along with it. Uh, Tobias, moving on now to that horrific terror attack that took place over the weekend in a concert hall in uh in Russia. Uh, Russia have charged four men over that attack um, and ISIS or ISIS-K, I believe, have taken responsibility for that attack, although I haven't seen that, that necessarily confirmed from within Russia. How much do you think that Russia, though, could use this terror attack to further their propaganda against Ukraine and other actors globally? Yes, that's exactly what Putin uh, will do. This is a major terrorist attack by any sense of the imagination. But how Putin has responded actually raises so many questions. Firstly, about the competence of ISIS-K that periodically does target Russia. It doesn't appear in the Western uh, media so much. Uh, but after Russia backed Syria in the civil war there a decade ago, ISIS-K has been constantly attacking uh, Russia on a periodic basis. Secondly, why did the Russian security forces uh, that actually watch Putin's back, that keep Putin in power, why did they fail to identify the attack, particularly that, that when the CIA had actually shared its own intelligence to say uh, an operation was pending? And then finally, it will worry the ordinary Russians, who largely buy in, sadly, into Putin's uh, claim, his authoritarianism, that in the knowledge that uh, by giving Putin all that power, he will keep the nation safe. Putin stakes his legitimacy on being in total command, on, on being in fully, fully in control, of protecting the motherland from all the threats he tells his people out there. And many Russians could easily be asking today, what on earth are we doing in Ukraine when actually the real threat is from his, uh, Islamic extremism? And that's not being challenged. And it's interesting, because the minute I saw this, um, and, and, and Tobias, it, you know, I'm, I'm not into conspiracy theorists, but the first thing I thought was false flag. The first thing I thought was, has he, I mean, maybe it's a terrible thing to say, has he arranged this himself to absolutely give him further justification to tell the Russian people that they need to go even further in Ukraine? Whether he did that or ignored the CIA via the foot, whatever, the fact of the matter is, immediately he will use this, which asks so many questions. Of course, the loss of life, horrific, but the way those four men with black eyes were paraded, I mean, I, I, the whole thing to me, uh, not stage managed, but certainly adds weight to the fact that he will use this, won't he? And again, we've got to wake up to it, haven't we? We have to wake up to it. Yeah, you make a number of important points there. Firstly, uh, you imply a, a false flag. That's exactly what happened in the past with another attack on a theatre, which was clearly instigated by Russian forces. And it was designed for Putin to tell the message to his own people, look, you need me to keep your country strong. So you can't actually rule anything out. From what I understand at the moment, all the intelligence I've seen, this does look like a legitimate attack. And that actually raises bigger questions too, difficult questions for us, because ISIS-K are based in Tajikistan, also in Afghanistan, which, of course, we departed. They are arch enemies of the Taliban, and they are on the rise. They are recruiting and training, and they have, uh, you know, uh, they have um, uh, want to challenge the West as much as they want to challenge Russia. Therefore, an attack in Moscow could easily be, uh, now could be copycatted in uh, other capital cities across uh, the West as well. So the threat of terrorism is very much alive and very much a concern to the British as well as into the Russian people. Tobias, do you think that there might be an official increase of the terror threat level here domestically in, in light of what happened in Russia over the weekend? I don't think there will be. It's a good question to ask. The one thing we're very good at here, uh, as we shared with the, our own intelligence or the CIA did with, with Russia, 
is that we can actually pick up not the lone wolf, not the individuals that, to, that uh, take things into their own hands, but when there is something orchestrated and so forth, our intelligence agencies are arguably the best in the world. And they can pick up uh, and, and actually identify these uh, potential threats way in, in advance. I'm not saying that that is, uh, is always going to cover us, uh, but from that perspective, we would firstly see a rise in that. But it's very, very clear from MI6 that they are absolutely concerned with the rise of, of Islamic extremism, not just in the UK, but wider afield as well. Tobias, it's always a pleasure, but I'm going to finish in a way that you didn't think I was going to finish. Guess what I found out at the weekend, my friend? <laughs> I have no idea. Well, I have no I've idea just, where you're going to go with this. I've just moved and you're my MP. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to knocking your door very soon. Well, you might well be, and I might be demanding a meeting. Tobias Elwood, thank you very much indeed. Former, no, former Conservative MP, the Conservative MP, Tobias Elwood, thank you very much I'm indeed. Chair of the Defence Select Committee. That's what course. I was trying to say. Good well, man. Let's take another look at some of this morning's front pages now. Here's our top story today. The Sun says Britain will officially blame China for the 2021 cyber attack today in Parliament, as the paper says that hackers access the personal details of 40 million UK voters. It's frightening, right? So frightening. Uh, the Mirror reveals that a third of landlords have been forced to close pubs as early as 8pm due to costs and a lack of customers. It's frightening, that, isn't it? It is. It's frightening. And finally, royals will come back stronger, claim the Mail, as the paper reveals King Charles hopes to attend Royal Ascot this summer, as well as some summer parties at Buckingham Palace. Now, staying with the royals now, and over the weekend, the world was left utterly shocked by the Princess of Wales' cancer diagnosis. In that amazingly brave personal message to the public, she ended months of speculation about her health and intrusion into her family's privacy. Well, Kate's revelation marks an unprecedented openness about the health of our most senior royals, with both the king and the future queen suffering with the disease. But it comes alongside a strong request for privacy from the princess, not least for the sake of her young family. Well, joining us now is Talk TV Royal Editor Sarah Hewson. Sarah, good morning. There's morning been an you. awful lot of pressure on the royals in recent months, but do you think that this personal public address from Catherine on Friday will quash that? I, I certainly think there is a huge amount of admiration and respect for the Princess of Wales now. She has set out exactly what she's been going through over the course of the past few months. She's set out why she's needed time, why they haven't talked about it before in the strongest of terms, as in, I needed to tell my children first. And who can argue Nobody. with that? Uh, and I think we had a message over the weekend again from them saying uh, that they're very grateful and very moved by the... Uh, the messages of support they've had from members of the public and thanking them for appreciating their need for privacy. So, again, a reminder, look, there's a lot of interest in this, but don't forget, they need to go away now. She needs to heal. And is she really appealing to the public in that sense when they've, they've made calls for privacy? Because, essentially, there's not much that the public can do to infringe on the royal family's privacy, aside from maybe film them at, you know, the farm shop in Windsor. they're talking about the online. Well, I Are think that's talking... one of the key points, yeah. though, because mm. um, what we're told by Kensington Palace is that although she's not going to be on public duties, she does want to get on with her normal life. Yeah. She does want to be around with her children. She does want to be able to pop to the farm shop if she wants to. Mm. And I think they want to be left alone in peace to be able to do that. As actually generally before, Norfolk, they were. Though, they have to gone to Norfolk. They've gone to their home. It's, it's a, you know, a real retreat for them oh, in no. nature, no. away from everything else. And I think, um, hopefully, the public will respect that. Those but as for kids. social media, I mean, that's a whole different well, yeah, I, I, Listen, you know this, I'm not just saying, the, the kids go to the school that my kids went to, and, and, and that's all I could think about on Friday. It was one of those moments. I, mm. I, I spoke to Nick about... I, I th was like, where were you when you heard that? I was so... Yeah. Look, the fo if we're being completely honest, and that's how this show should be, what's and all, the Photoshop thing was obviously an attempt to, to, to push uh, in, everything's fine. It backfired spectacularly, but I will... I don't Doesn't care... Doesn't look inconsequential I, I, now I, I don't, in the, in I don't the care light about of that. this, yeah. Those vile human... What's that bloke called? Owen, know. what's he called? I'm not sure. That, Owen Jones. All these people that are now rowing back on, on, on the things that are disgusting conspiracy theories. We have a woman, right? I don't in think her Owen 30s. Jones pushed any conspiracy theories just to say that. No, I just he, think he showed an interest in where Kate was. But he was pretty disgusting, and so were other people. And my point is this I just think we have a woman in her 30s with three kids who has had to come out and say, I've got cancer. Enough is enough. We're still reading this morning. You were telling me this. There's a, people are saying it's AI. Seriously, these people are a disgrace. And actually, Whitehall now looking into whether, I mean, you were talking about China hacks. Yes. Yeah. Whitehall now looking into whether these are 
uh, coordinated attacks from Russia, from China, right, Iran, because, Nicola, you talked about this with did, me last yeah. week, if you sow the seeds of discontent yeah. and, and, and you destabilise, and that is exactly the what this has been yeah. all about, these conspiracy theories. Yes, there are individuals who've been peddling them, but actually there are kind of greater, darker forces Yeah, the algorithm and all well. that. And I think the one thing we can all do now is not engage with them. Yeah. Because no, the no. less we engage with them, the less traction they have and the less we feed that algorithm. I thought Nick made a really good point earlier when she said that one of the nicest things that's come out of this it's a great picture on the front of the mail this morning, is the oh, obvious Charles close and... relationship between Charles and Catherine. There was and the a... thought of him toddling she... down the corridor. She's yeah. not just his son's wife. No, I agree. She? No, very much. She's a daughter yeah. he never had. We knew there was a close relationship. Yeah. We knew he admired her hugely for the way she's brought up his grandchildren, for the way she's grown into the role. You know, she's not born into this. But then when you hear uh, about him... Toddling was the word used <laughs> in his dressing gown down the corridor well, of the London clinic. The, the two gown. of them both in hospital. <laughs> the ones that are open at the back. I'm sure he was wearing. I his know he was, but, it's just the but to go and sit pajamas. at his daughter-in-law's bedside, and then a private lunch at Windsor Castle Useful. last week between the two of them, the day sure. before her message was released. Both of them, of course, have a shared experience that neither of them could have predicted, neither of them want. But I think they will be a huge support to each other, and that bond really being cemented. And it's not for any of us to speculate, but I, I said this twice already this morning, only because I had cancer 12 years ago. Preempt... What's, oh, what is it? Preemptive. Preemptive chemotherapy is before it's gone through the, the, the nymph glands. And that's why she... Nymph, the lymph nodes. And that's why she was very positive in her message. I suspect there was an operation, they found some cells, they're doing chemotherapy to make sure it hasn't spread or it doesn't spread further. It's, it's actually... It's a positive-ish uh, uh, diagnosis. Horrible to hear. But I do, I got the distinct feeling that it was all right. Well, also, she has age on her side. She's otherwise young, fit, healthy. And I think you could see from that message, she also wants to maintain a positive yeah. mental attitude. She talked about healing her body, her mind and her spirits as well. And so I think keeping that positivity is vitally important for her, but also for the children. And for the monarchy, because I think she's their diamond, don't you? Absolutely. You know, we've got the two stars of the show, yeah. the yeah. king and Kate, who Apparently are Apparently he's getting frustrated. Exposed. He wants to be at Royal Ascot this summer in the garden yes. parties. He wants Tell to go back to got, work. He's got plans to go back to. He has, uh, and it might, we might even see him sooner. We might see him leading the family on Easter Sunday into church. Uh, Peter Phillips, his nephew, has spoken. Uh, he's given an interview and he said he's really frustrated. He's pushing his aides. He wants to get back to work. He's frustrated that his recovery is taking a little longer than he might have anticipated. Of course, he thought he was going in for prostate surgery and he'd be back in a few weeks. Didn't know at the time that he had cancer too. Um, we might see him at Royal Ascot. We might see him at the garden parties. As the weather gets better, of course, it's much easier to mingle with members of the public outdoors when you're also trying to protect your immune system. Do you think, just very quickly, just off the top of my head, we've always talked about the monarchy in the past and the Queen, you know, never complain, never explain. The openness with which he talked about his cancer and then she was forced to, notwithstanding the children, do you think that it will mean that the monarchy continues to be more open or do you feel that they have had their fingers somewhat burnt over the last few months. I think that Catherine was encouraged by the positive reaction to the King's openness. And she always wanted to talk about it, but the timing had to be right. And, you know, as we know, it was all about when they could tell the children, how they could protect the children. And they've done it when the children aren't going into school, when there's no playground gossip, when they're not being asked questions that they can't answer, and when actually they can all just hunker down together, really, and make sure that they give the children the best support they and that's can. that's what it is, it's and our family, isn't it? Yeah, think about what they've been through, you know, to find out their granddad has been diagnosed with cancer and then, you know, their mum not being very well. And then, you know, although people weren't talking about her cancer diagnosis at school, people, I'm sure, would have been asking them, where's yeah. your mum? Yeah. You know? Oh, without any shadow of a doubt, kids are... And kids are you know, I mean, Louis's very young still, he's yes. not yet six. But for George, he's 10 sure. years old, you know, Children are aware and yeah. questions are being asked. I think their local areas, their local neighbourhoods, their schools, etc., are very protective of them. They want them to be a part of those communities. They want them to fit in. They don't want to expose them to that. And so I think that will have helped massively. And how awful, sorry, I've just remembered, her uncle amidst all of this, I mean, not necessarily knowing what was wrong with her, but still going on 
celebrity big well, brother. Well, worse than that, well, worse pulled, than that, pulled out. He pulled out of the then, final on, then on Friday night. realised he'd done an article, Nick, that went in the fabulous magazine or whatever it is, and I, I could be getting that wrong, one of these big Sunday magazines, and he was talking all about it and was mortified because he couldn't stop it. Yeah, because the interview had and the, photo, the shoot had been done a couple of weeks mm. earlier, was in one of the weekend magazines. He has apologised for the poor timing of that and said he didn't know, of course, at the time. You look absolutely exhausted. You've been working <laughs> not... You look fresh. No, no, hold on, no. I've spent hours in makeup. No, no, you've been working non stop, haven't you? Since Thursday, I, mean, I saw is... you in Australia and all over the place. This is a huge, huge story yeah. all around the world. I mean, we've had the White House responding, Bruce Springsteen on stage in Las Vegas, Gwyneth Paltrow responding all over the world. And I think it just shows how much love there is for the Princess of Wales. That are you surprised are really by, by the, the, no, the I'm depth not. of love? I, I, I internationally, mean, we know, really? Internationally. I mean, I think, you know, as I said, described her as the star of the show, she is. She and William really are. And she's the most trusted member of the royal family mm. in this country. And I think after the King's diagnosis and then this, for someone so young, young as well, it really has children. sent shockwaves everywhere. You look amazing. <laughs> Don't take what I say the wrong way, but I know how He's hard you've been jealous. working. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you so much. Yummy hardest, mummy. Hardest working woman in television, Sarah Heeson. Well, I still think you're quite hard working. You've got a baby and yeah. you're here every morning. Well, I finish at half nine. Uh, still to come on Talk Today, high-profile figures continue to hand back their prestigious, albeit controversial, Garrick Club memberships. Keep in mind. And you don't have one. And caviar on call. Why what delivery? Is this? Delivery is supplying luxury beluga straight to your door. So you don't want a burger. Jeremy's door. Yeah. <laughs> Just bring me caviar. Politics Joe's Ava Santina. She likes caviar with Guinness. And the spectators, Freddie Gray, are back for a final look through this morning's papers. Do please stay with us. 8.20. Three. We're coming back in three. Do join us, or we'll be here on our own. Thank Should you. we get some caviar? Yeah, let's get the caviar in. Come on. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. All Rosie. right, oi, oi, treat go. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman, a trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Plymouth City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. Now, you might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight-pound Nokia, reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss you. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, <laughs> a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family, and if any police officer reads that statement. If you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, did what, fail her. Yeah, was to it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth.
Well, welcome back to Talk Today. It is 8.26. We'll have the weather in just a moment. But here's what else is coming up on the programme. Devastating news. French red wine makers are turning their backs on tradition and embracing non-alcoholic alternatives. We'll discuss the deplorable situation <laughs> of that in the papers next. Well, a mum is campaigning for new rules to be enforced, limiting the number of passengers that newly qualified drivers can carry. We'll have more on that just before nine. That's important. And former, well, not former, when he is a football, Legend former player and manager Graham Souness live in the studio at 9.15 as he reveals why he's encouraging others, this is important, to get their blood pressure checked after his own health battle. All that coming up. But first, Naz, what's the weather looking like? More of the same. It's looking changeable. It is spring after all. And I mean, you, hold on a second. Now, now listen, I'm, you are the first lady of weather. You've just said that it's spring and yet last half hour you said it's going to snow. Yeah, and that How does it snow in the spring? Do you know spring? what? Statistically, it's more likely to snow in April than it is around Christmas time. Look at the happiness in her face as she gave First lady that. of weather. Hashtag just saying. <laughs> Hashtag don't know what you're talking about. The Chinese will probably get that message so they can do one. Crack on. <laughs> Let's just take a look at the weather, yeah? <laughs> Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Good morning. More of the same. Changeable conditions for this week. We are looking at rain, we're looking at showers, blustery conditions, temperatures have returned back to normal. You may have noticed that over the weekend. And there is also going to be snow in the next 24 hours. Not everywhere. It's all across the highest ground of Scotland. But as that rain moves its way northwards throughout today and hits cold air across the north, then it is going to turn to some significant snow. The Met Office do have a warning for starting from tonight for central and eastern parts of Scotland. But back to the here and now. And it's a very wet start across many western parts of the UK, as you can see, for Northern Ireland, the Republic, southwest Scotland and western parts of England and Wales. Further east of England and for the rest of Scotland, it's a mostly fine and bright start, a bit chilly with a patchy frost though. And then we see that rain steadily move its way northwards. It probably just skips past eastern parts of England, so probably just about staying dry there with a bit of brightness later. But as you can see, wintry showers will start across the high ground of Scotland later. Southern Scotland and low level seeing rain. Northern Ireland will be rainy through the afternoon. And then rain clears from much of England and Wales, bar northern England and western parts where another batch of wet weather heads through. Devon and Cornwall seen some heavy downpours. But as I initially mentioned, for East Anglia, the southeast, the East Midlands, it will be a mostly bright afternoon. Temperatures around average for the time of year up to 12 degrees Celsius. Now, overnight, that rain continues to steadily move its way northwards up towards Scotland, hitting that cold air above 300 metres. There could be as much as 20 centimetres of snow and above 200 metres up to around 2 centimetres. So that could cause some disruption to travel through tomorrow morning along the higher routes of Scotland in central and eastern areas. Elsewhere, though, we're continuing to see rain at low levels for much of Ireland, Northern Ireland, uh, Northern England becoming drier by dawn, and then rain across parts of western areas of England and Wales that will move up towards parts of the Midlands and northwest England, perhaps the southeast later tomorrow afternoon. For Scotland, that rain and hill snow moves away, so Scotland becomes brighter tomorrow afternoon. Few winter showers still likely, though. Northern Ireland will be cloudy and wet. Uh, Wales will see brighter skies developing from the west, as will southwest England, but there will be rain for the north and east of Wales, the Midlands and the southeast of England and cloudy ahead of that. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Thank you, Naz. Uh, right on 8.30, Monday morning, we'll have across the UK. Let's have a fun look through this morning's papers with Ava Santina from Politics Joe and the Spectators, Freddie Gray, the best duo we ever have had on the show. Including oh, us. Wow. Right. Much better than us. Should we just go and do the paper review? <laughs> yeah, let's get... go away. Why don't you present and we'll show. do the paper review? Because it's such an easy gig, isn't it? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Look at right. her face. Freddie, please kick us off with a story in The Times. Uh, well, this is the rather delicious news that uh, John Sopel uh, was, is joining the Garrett because the news agent John Sopel's podcast, which is always getting to the heart of injustice in British society, uh, was strangely quiet about this Garrick story. Uh, last week, the Garrick not allowing women and so on. And it turns out that John Sopel is uh, himself becoming or has become a member. Oh, John. Uh, which is quite, quite fun. Um, but I love this Garrick story. It just keeps going on and on and on. What is the issue? What is the issue? Ava, well, where what's... do you stand on this? Oh, she, he didn't even my... get a chance, well, sorry, Freddie. We're talking about women. Yeah. Uh, you're my oh, beacon, yeah. oh, my beacon of feminism. Where do you stand on the Garrick? No, she'd be fine oh, no, with no, it, no, no, you're going to hate No, no, it's fine say. because I, I might be with Come you. Come on, you two are the same. I just think that... OK, so Charlotte Ivers wrote about this in the Sunday Times yesterday and I thought she she put it perfectly, which is that 
we need to have a bit of silliness in our nation and we need to have, you know, a few archaic and draconian institutions. And this is one of them. I'm far more annoyed about the, uh, the oh, I'm going to get the name wrong, Beefsteak Club, isn't it? Yeah. That one, I'm far more annoyed about that club. That will never get to an airing. That's when, where the new Conservative leader has decided, you know, that's when any important policy is, you know... I don't know why you're more annoyed is, about is that. Like, that's what happens, like the Pope being... The pope. Garrick is just a load of, you know... <laughs> Wet fish. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> you, you go know, for a drink poli- there. If a man invites you, go. But, but it's is not it policy makers? Is uh, really? Is but it? are there soft policy making? Ha- is there soft policy yes, making? Yes, John Sopel happening? has actually been. Uh, <laughs> it has actually let's been cut to right the chase. Yeah. What's wrong? Toilets of the Garrick. Yeah, people it, yeah. making decisions. Let, let's, yeah. let's ask you both. Genuine question. Um, what's wrong with men-only spaces is there are women-only spaces. Agree with you on that. I think yeah. that's that's a good thing, that's fine. But there's an issue with... We've got the Gary Club, you've got the there's kitchen. There's a difference between having spaces where women are invited yeah. and it's women positive and it's focusing on women and equally with men. And there's a difference between that and going, here is somewhere where men or women are banned outright. I think we'll put, a lot of people object to this idea that it's sort of establishment and that important decisions are being made. They've clearly never been to the garage. <laughs> it's just red-faced old people getting drunk and falling off their chairs. Well, <laughs> well, I asked my dad, and this is very true, so my old dad used to be a member of the Garrick, he worked for the Queen Mother, and my, I remember saying to my dad years ago, how have you lasted 60 years oh. with my mother? And he went, went deaf after six months, old boy, and a sniffed every lunchtime. That's the way it was. <laughs> I don't, think, I don't think it's against... I don't, I don't, I don't I think it's against... I did yeah. declare your interest, then. for me. Yes, Why I could try. shouldn't women be allowed in the Garrick? Why shouldn't? Yeah, why should why should women be banned from the Garrick? <laughs> uh, because men like to sit around talking rubbish. And women and can't not talk banned, rubbish. You just can't uh, be members. Uh, women can sit. Well, well, I mean, why should why should there be women only clubs? I mean, I, I, I think. But specifically you, with the Garrick. Why, why can why only stop? women go on and hen do? You, you're allowed to invited. say there's no answer because that's what I'm kind of getting. I towards. suppose the old answers of uh, <laughs> sexism and so on. I actually had quite a funny uh, thing at the Garrick a couple of weeks ago where I. Um, I was sitting with a member and he was talking about admitting women because it's been in debate in the character before this story. Sure. Broke. Admitting or omitting? Uh, admitting. Oh. <laughs> and uh, and I, but I got the wrong end of the stick and I thought he was talking about mobile phones. So I was... <laughs> what? I was saying <laughs> things... Where have we got from the Ban- character? Banning mobile China. phones. China. So I was saying things like, um, well, I can see there are pretty good arguments against. And he was going, <laughs> well, you and me both, my boy, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm, afraid, I'm afraid we're in the minority. And this conversation went on for about 10 minutes. It's like a before, Ronnie sketch. Before I finally clocked that he see, was talking red-faced about... See, red drinking too much, talking rubbish. Yes. I just think there should be women-only spaces, men-only spaces, and everybody should just join in as and when. Sure. Uh, Ava! Ava! <laughs> <laughs> Ava. <laughs> sound like I'm calling for front, my daughter. Front page of the Metro now. Uh, nearly £14 billion pounds was donated to charity in the UK last year. Yes, and it's the least well-off places that are donating the, the largest proportion of their salary. So in Belfast West, people were donating up to 2.2% of their salary, whereas in Kensington, even though that was the second highest donators, they were only donating about 0.5% of their salary. One of the reasons they're badly off. (laughs) <laughs> giving it to charity. But you yes. know, this is you know this is a really big thing over Christmas as well. There was such a you know this is you know you still absolutely must donate to food banks when when and where you can. Mm. But there were some places who had too much over Christmas because people were so giving. I think yeah. you know it really did hit home for a lot of people that the cost of living crisis was awful. One thing my dad's always said to me: the people who have the least will give the most. And I think that that is true across society. Um, I think people who are in vulnerable situations financially can uh, empathise and identify with people who are even worse off and are more likely to give money. And I think that's a lovely thing. And time. I think your time is important, people. isn't it? Mm. You can't get people donating that. Sure. You know, my dad keeps going on about how he can't get in at the local food bank. He's trying to, <laughs> he's trying to volunteer at the local food bank and they keep biffing him off. <laughs> I'm not joking. Uh, <laughs> Freddie, that's I'm... the most ludicrous thing you've ever said I, to me. I promise you, I promise you. I'm not going you. into any detail, but that's a ludicrous thing to say I to me. I promise no, there you. Certain, there are certain uh, yeah, food banks and baby banks and things like that, clothing banks, that are Does just completely over. Oh, that's why. No, 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 no. no. Not that side of the family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right then. Fair enough. Um, maybe you're right. I don't know. I mean, I can counter that argument um, with, with several, but one particular man I know who's done very well for himself and has dedicated his entire life to giving away. But we're um, talking about a percentage of no, total No, no, I, I get that. And I get that. And I think, uh, yeah, I, I think the problem with charity is going to be uh, now, cost of living crisis. I think a lot of people probably can't, but the, the thought but people of people still do, and, and yet it's the richest society. Get, I, I give, I would never... T- I do yeah. Things I do, you know, online things. Little you probably things? China now know about it. 
I think course. even I felt sorry for some dogs the other day from the RSPCA. It was all undernourished. I know quite a few people who well. I know quite a few people who work for the big charities and they earn very good livings. And I sometimes think when I give money, which I do occasionally do, at the uh, Garrick, ten the Garrick, yeah, when, outside. When the, when, the, when the bowl goes around the Garrick, we all jump. <laughs> but, uh, I do think I do think that. Um, you sometimes think this is just going on a sort of, you know, middle-class salary for someone in London. Do you think that... Um... £100,000 is a huge salary. No, no, do you think that charities... Look, a lot of people will say charity begins at home, but are they filling the gap unfairly that government should fill? Uh... Too much pressure on them. No, well, I, I think, think Ava Santini's going to agree with me. Mm. OK, Ava, you no, agree. No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm just going to say, you know, that there was one thing that Jeremy Hunt said the other week where he was running to raise money for his local NHS... Um, and I, I was just thinking, my God, man, you're literally in you charge the of the... Sector. You don't need to be Where's running. Chancellor? You, you do not need to be exercising on a Saturday morning no. to raise money. You need to just, you know, hand over... Is it right, for example, that L London Air Ambulance is a charity? Oh, uh, don't get me on air ambulances to me. I mean, I've done... Uh, yeah, listen... The what have you done to an air what ambulance? Have you done no, to years and years when I was a radio <laughs> DJ, the Wiltshire ambulances, we raised money, money. But the most amazing thing, that it, yeah. I mean, ridiculous that you have to fund stuff like that. Yes. Was it hard for you to tell that story, that you had <laughs> raised a lot of money for charity? <laughs> was that hard? I had to play golf. To it was quite chest. a walk. I mean, and, they, and they didn't have a golf <laughs> buggy. I had to walk 18 holes. I think that was a whole <laughs> one from Ava there. Can we move on to the oh, next Oh, that story? was an analogy. <laughs> Thank was you. it a sponsored round of golf? <laughs> it was a celebrity pro-am thing, raising money for... <laughs> Well, the the Let's stay on track, guys. <laughs> You've got it about you today, haven't you, Santina? Ava, you can take us to our next story. This will devastate her. Yes, non-alcoholic wine. Discuss. I'm actually going to hand it to Freddie because he loved this story so much. Oh, really? Freddie, please. <laughs> I help. did love this story. It angers me because I, I, I think non-alcoholic wine is disgusting. I think that the beers are quite good, non-alcoholic beers are quite good, but non-alcoholic wine is really foul. And Bordeaux, apparently, you know, the great home of wine, uh, is um, <laughs> is turning its back on alcoholic wine, and is, well, some growers are moving towards non-alcoholic because that's the great growth sector of the market. This will obviously um, upset quite a few people, but I thought the whole point of having wine is that it's got alcohol in it. If you don't want to drink wine, so alcohol, don't drink. I don't understand. Some people like the taste, don't they? They like the flavour. Like the taste is disgusting. It's it's not... It tastes like grape juice, and like yeah. not even nice grape juice. But what, isn't that just a bit of teething problems? What, you think but they'll finally crack it? I think they might finally crack it. Vegan cheese has got better. All these things get better with time. But you Just know, put the a French cork are like in it, with thought. anything. You know, the French um, mate, vegetarian come on, help. food. Let, we're yeah, going to we agree, aren't we? You are a proper drinker. No, I am, but I also think that it's, you know, if, you've, if you're not drinking and you don't want to be asked why you're not drinking, yes. sometimes it's easier to just hold a, a glass of non-alcoholic wine. Do you know, do you know what I mean? It is true. I'm but on then surely you'd be asking for that so everybody would know that it's non-alcoholic. Well, no, because you, can do, cause, cause you can go to a bar and it, actually it's quite easy to order a non-alcoholic. You, you say what you want and then, you know, you kind of give a... You know, they get it. I, I, I see or you it might done. end up with a double instead of a single yeah. shot. <laughs> I'm sorry, non-alcoholic beer and wine, I don't understand. Just don't drink. I sort of agree with you. I'm, I'm on day 88 of no alcohol. <laughs> And uh, it's going to end on Saturday. <laughs> and, uh, do you feel good? Have, have you no, have don't feel better at all. It's a terrible idea. Don't. I mean, sorry, sorry. I do. I should, I should Nick was away. Rosie gave me such grief because I piously announced I was giving up alcohol on the first of January. It didn't. I how long did we it gave last? up at the same time. Ten days. You, ten days. Yeah, ten days. I haven't weak. missed it because I've been pregnant nine months, yeah. and then uh, no the baby months. was born <laughs> three months ago. Twelve months, you haven't drunk? No, I have. I've, oh. I, I still would have the odd glass of Prosecco when I was pregnant and then breastfeeding and stuff, but I'm just not bothered about getting Vic drunk anymore. Vic won't drink because she's breastfeeding. Yeah, you can still drink when you're breastfeeding. Mm, it's it's, up, it's up to an individual. I, but it's just, yeah, I get it. If I, if there was a really decent tasting like red wine out there, instead of having like half a glass, I'd I'd go for more. I do think it, what is odd about Britain is it's the only country where you have to apologise for not drinking. Yes. Uh, no or you're pregnant or you've got a drinking problem. Yeah. Nothing you'll ever do, is it? Nothing you'll ever do, apologise for not drinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Santina. Right, let's move on, Freddie. Uh, after 117 years, right. New York is set to axe a law that made affairs illegal. This is, yeah, one of those very odd what? Uh, laws that are still on the statute books that was never enforced and has finally been... I think there have been five instances in which it's been enforced since... Adultery puts you three months behind bars. Three months. And in New York, 
I mean, I think half of New York would be behind bars if yes. that was properly enforced. Were there different rules for men and women? I'm just imagining... Oh, here we no, go. No, come on, this is 1907. <laughs> I imagine that the woman was locked up far more stoned. than the man. Yeah, stoned for yeah. it. Yeah, I think there was... Uh, drinking, when the law came in, there's a lot of talk what? that it was a sexist law when it came in and it was the patriarchy and so on. Um, but it's not true. Are we implying law, that women... The law applied to men and women. Oh, did it? And okay. then the last... I, mean, I think the last person to actually be tried under it was a, was a man. Uh, convicted of it, sorry, I should say. What do you think on this, Ava? What, what, what do you mean? I mean, do you think people should be locked up for having affairs, Ava Santino? <laughs> <laughs> I do. You're, you're trying to imply so that she's having an affair. It, it feels like it's a pointed question. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, what she do you think of this? I'm genuinely racking my brain. I'm going, oh, I don't have she's, she's, she's sweating. Uh, she's yeah. absolutely sweating. <laughs> I do find it interesting, though, because a <laughs> marriage is a legal agreement between two parties and presumably... There's some sort of state involvement in that, right? They, mm. they view you differently as a couple. So if you are to break that contract, yes. surely there have to be some consequences that aren't necessarily just personal. Well, well, stoned. Yeah. Stoned. Stoned. Well, stoned divorce. Safe for divorce has become, has become a lot easier. Yes, uh, and, and rightly so. It used so. to be huge legal Alimony. obstacles to it. That Alimony. is a punishment, correct. You, I but, mean, people used to have to stage photographs of themselves in, in flagrante to, to get a divorce through. Uh, right, very quickly, we've got one minute. Uh, Ava, this is the story of the sun about a posh restaurant flogging caviar on Deliveroo. You're a caviar sort of girl. Do you, I actually have never had caviar. No, not I've me. Lived a, I've lived a very sheltered life. But, yeah, oh, gosh, sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, no, Freddy. I did not. Freddy. I did not. Um, a de there's a deli that is delivering uh, caviar, but the uproar here in the sun is that you still have to pay £3 delivery, which I'm not too sure on, actually, because I don't... Think that you do pay delivery over twenty five pounds, do you? Oh, wait, so, so it's one thousand six hundred pounds. It's one thousand six hundred pounds. Yeah. I but think... I don't really under, I don't really know what's in the caviar that makes it that. What, what, what do you get a special fish that's? I think well, I think caviar is delicious, but you don't actually need the really expensive stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Happy to have it you cheaper. You can get all salmon roe for, for about £20 a jar. You heard Very it here first. I think, I think you're in the market for that, aren't you? Thank I you am, so yeah, much Saturday morning. for joining yeah. us both this morning. Thank Go off to have some non-alcoholic wine and some caviar. Ava Santina from Politics Joe and Freddie Gray from The Spectator. We've been getting in touch with your views and your opinions. We will do some of them, but still to come on Talk Today. We speak to the mother of one of the four teenagers killed in a car crash in Sodonia who is now calling for stricter controls for newly qualified drivers. This is Talk Today. It is 8.43. Good morning. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And you're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. All Rosie. right, Oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. You might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight-pound Nokia, reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, miss it. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. 
And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did fail her. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Uh, welcome back to Talk Today. What is it? It's 13 minutes to 9 o'clock. Now, the mother of one of the four teenagers who drowned in a crash in Snowdonia is calling for tighter rules for new drivers. Well, the incredibly brave Crystal Owen was left broken after her son Harvey was found in an overturned, partially submerged car in Gwynedd in November last year. We're now joined by Crystal alongside campaigns manager at the road safety charity Break, Lucy Straker. Crystal, first up... Um, Really, really appreciate you being here. Incredibly painful time. But as with so many amazing people who go through something like this, you've decided to turn your attention to changing the law for good in memory of your son. Can you tell us a little bit about that campaign? Yeah, so um, the day after um, the crash, um, I found out about the graduated licence or progressive dri driving licensing system. And it was just a light bulb moment. I, I mean, I hadn't even thought about road safety or anything. Leading up to what happened, Harvey, as far as we knew, didn't have any friends who drove. He told me an elaborate set of, you know, a story of what leading up to how he got there. Um, and so I, I just thought, well, this just makes perfect sense. Um, I hadn't even got to the stage of thinking about Harvey driving because he hadn't had any lessons or... So, I, yeah, I just couldn't believe. And when I... It's hard to get across in these, the short time we have on TV to explain the full details of how this works and has been proven to work, but it's an absolute no-brainer. Um, everybody thinks it won't affect them, and it does. <laughs> and, Crystal, you're obviously a very responsible parent, as you said. Mm. Your son was telling you, yeah. you know, elaborate sort of lies as to well, I mean, where he was I actually, actually going. had evidence of where he was the first night, and that was where he said he was going right. to a friend's granddad's house. Um, it was obviously the, the second night. I had no idea. He hadn't packed for camping. He wasn't prepared for it. Um, he sent me a photo from that morning of, before he set off of where he was. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, it just angers me that as parents we have no control really because we need this law to enforce. Sure. Telling teenagers something is not enough. Yeah, because parents can't be there all the time, can mm. they, Lucy? Um, and of course, especially at that age, they're, they're entering into adulthood. So it's on other law enforcers, perhaps, to step in if this law were to be brought in. Can you just explain what the difference in legislation would be that you're calling for? What we're calling for is instead of... Because um, we know that um, the 6% six, 6 of licence holders aged between 17 and 24, but 18% of, of people who are killed in car crashes are in that same, that same bracket. So they're disproportionately represented in those road crash statistics. So we know that that's the issue. We know one of the main reasons is because kind of as your brain develops, when you get up to 25, you kind of, you're more, you're more overconfident, you're more likely to take risks. We all were, we were all at, the same, at that age group. And then you couple that with kind of like the inexperience of only just passing your test and, uh, you know, being in, 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 a, in, a, in a vehicle which is, you know, can, has the ability to kill. You know, you put all that together and there's no wonder that these things happen. So if you put in some safeguards, we know that's going to happen. Let's put some safeguards in. Let's pro like The progressive licensing system brings them through that stage mm -hmm. in a more kind of secure learning environment to stop that from happening. Uh, I can't, and I'm, and I'm not just saying this, I'm completely with you both. Um, I've got one girl who just passed and another one who's testing. And, and I, would, I would talk about younger people and I'd talk about older people. I think it is easy to pass your test You've never been on a motorway. You're suddenly in this thing that you quite rightly say can kill. And maybe this idea, um, I, I can't see a, 
anything that isn't beneficial. And also, the elderly generation. I, I literally had a battle getting my dad to give up driving, but he was a menace. And I think, I do think that both ends of the scale should be looked at, yeah. and I think it's an it's, absolute must It's really must outdated. From I you. mean, the age of driving was decided 100 years ago, and look how more powerful cars are now. And They've how many changed young people. cars. They're so yeah. fast. Yeah. And, so, and, 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 you I mean, know, they're they, electric they, and you can drive. It's yeah. ridiculous. And they say it's like an impingement on their freedom. However, the age group that are more likely to, to crash um, are young people and mm. they are more likely to pass their test early on. Mm. And a driving test in itself is there to protect people. And so before a driving test, you're not even ha allowed to drive. And then you pass your test and the idea is to keep them safe. I've got a response for you that. from the Department of Transport. I'd love your response to yeah. this. Every death on our roads is a tragedy and our thoughts remain with Harvey Owen's family. We continue to work tirelessly to improve road safety. We've commissioned research designed to help learner and newly qualified drivers improve their skills and safety, whilst our THINK campaign is specially targeted at young drivers. How have the government responded to your campaign? Have they wanted to work with you or have they said <sighs> that you know, legislation already exists or other campaigns work just fine? So, sadly, they, they state it's a tragedy, it's preventable tragedies, many of these deaths are. Um, they've done this research, which has actually been ready since last since 2022 and still hasn't been published. Um, however, I don't understand what they think this research is going to do. There's 30 years' worth of research from other countries, um, from top psychologists, road experts, that have proven education is not enough. I've spoke to countless families, some families that have even spoke to their children after Harvey and the boys crash, and they have still gone on to crash and, and die. Um, education is not enough. Um, Particularly when there's that social pressure yeah. at that age. You know, the, I remember the first person to learn to pass their test at our school. I still have never taken a test because I am terrified of driving mm, and the responsibility yeah. of, of somebody else's lives. Um, but that social pressure, yeah. I think, supersedes anything that parents can say. Absolutely. Um, Alice was like, they all want to live straight, yeah. straight Everybody away wants, she did yeah, a test. Yeah, this yeah, is so the it thing. has to be enforceable. And even if it was law, I'm sure a lot of young people would break it. Lucy, am I right in saying this has happened in New Zealand and there's 23% decrease in accidents, fatal accidents, as a result yeah. of it? Yeah, so New Zealand, Australia, Canada Amazing. and some parts of the US. So no brainer, isn't it? Well, that's what we think. And we think, you know, they, like one of the things would be kind of restricting the number of peer age passengers so right. that you can't have that group of, in, in the car. Another one would be kind of like nighttime driving because a lot of these crashes happen kind of during the night on rural roads. You know, it's, it's dark, it's wet, there's a car full of... And those, it's those kind of situations how that can, generally happen. So if we can... We know that, so let's try and safeguard how against How can we that. make this happen? You've got a, a signature, a petition with 18,000. We need to get the to problem is with the, I totally support Yeah, it. the problem is with the petition is most of the signatures have all come from the shoes we tell area because of it's affected there sure. so we need to get it out there mm. further afield and i think some of the things that are stopping people signing the petition is misunderstanding it so i think some people think they're not allowed to take passengers up until 25 that's not the case it's under that age because of the brain development they they for the first 12 months it is so and it is just peer age passengers so they're allowed to take their mom or their auntie or their dad they're, they're allowed to take their own child if they were if they want if they chose to they could take their own children if they're a young parent there could be exemptions same as for the nighttime driving in other countries they've worked around the issues that the government keep bringing up you know, in terms of economic impact and stuff. They, this only, as Lucy will yeah. tell you, the, the percentage of... So, yeah, only 13% uh, of people in that age group mm. actually drive for work between the hours of 9pm and 6am. So when they say that, you know, we don't want to kind of impinge on their freedom and their ability to work, it's only a 13%, whereas 18% of, of those who are dying are in that age group. Will you, so, wow. you, will know. you do me a favour? I'm going to share that on my social media. I, I see this is a no-brainer, Nick. I don't even understand. And, and by the way, I, I won't find the right words. I never have in... 20 years of doing this, you're amazing. And, and I'm sorry for the wrong words, but I, I couldn't even be sat there if I was you. And I, I might think take lots my of people, hat off to you. Lots of people say that, but at the end of the day, it's, I'm not brave and I'm not, you know, I'm doing this because Harvey would be here if this law was in place. So, and I, I've got other children, I don't want them to get to this age and be worrying, yeah. you know, of all the things I've worried about Harvey, this was not one of them because I didn't think it affected me. Mm -hmm. And the amount of parents that have reached out, said my child said they were going to the shop, or they, all it takes is them to get into a car and they have literally got a lethal weapon at their hands. Yeah. Somebody can have it, at the moment there's no minimal lesson, so that somebody could have, say, five lessons, for example, they can get in a car, the age of 17, fresh out of school, basically, Absolutely. and fill a car and they are responsible. And it's not like we're trying to punish them, we're just trying to they are responsible for other people's lives, so we're just trying to 
get them to have the experience on road conditions as well. This is the thing mm. that people are not getting the experience, the varied experience yeah. on road conditions in the dark, agree on wet you. roads. It's, it's... Will you share that stuff for me and I'll definitely yes. share that stuff um, and if, if, can, can people just Google it, basically? Yeah, they so can, young, they can a quicker way to find the petition is Young, young Driver Petition and it will come up as the Young first Driver yeah. Petition. We'll both share it on our personal social Absolutely. media. Thank you so much Georgia, for joining Lucy, us this thank morning. You very much You've been wonderful guests. Thank you, Crystal Owen and Lucy Straker from Break. Now, still to come on the show, uh, China targeting a group of senior politicians at Westminster. So we asked the Sun's Rod Little for his opinion. That'll be interesting. It's approaching nine o'clock. We're coming back in three. This is Talk Today. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of Cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <Whirl, is it? laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, it put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did fail her. We're supposed to, fail her. We're supposed to move on from era. that. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. This is Talk Today with Jeremy Kyle and Nicola Thorpe. Good morning, it's 9am on Monday the 25th of March. It absolutely is, you were talking today, very good morning. We're on TV, radio of course, online and your smart speaker. These are Monday morning's top stories. Threat from the East, a group of MPs and peers will be told later today that they have been targets of a string of cyber attacks from China. Tip for terror, after a deadly attack in Moscow over the weekend, the UK is warned of the very real threat of Islamic State. And check your blood pressure. That's the message from football legend Graham Sooners as he speaks out about his own health battle. He's live in the studio this hour. And it's a wet start to the week as rain pushes northwards across many parts of the UK and later there may even be some snow.
no for some. I have the details in the forecast at the end of the programme. Cheers, Naz. Now it's time for your headlines with Emily. Thank you, Nicola. Good morning. MPs are set to be briefed about the cyber threat posed by China, while some individuals will be told about direct threats against them. Sources close to the matter have said that the Deputy Prime Minister Oliver Dowden is expected to make a statement to Parliament later, in which he'll also outline that the personal data of more than 40 million voters was accessed last year. Well, former chair of the Defence Select Committee, Tobias Elwood, has told Talk Today we must work with our allies before it's too late. We've all got to do the same thing. Otherwise, China is able to exploit the differences that we have. And that is the big challenge that we face. We need a China strategy. We need to recognise that this is China's century, that uh, in the next few decades, it could easily challenge or indeed overtake the United States militarily, economically, technologically as well. Four men have been charged with terrorism in Russia following a concert hall attack that killed 137 people. Three of the men were marched into a court in Moscow while a fourth was pushed in a wheelchair. Russia claimed Ukrainian involvement. However, Kyiv says those allegations are absurd. Islamic State has since said it was behind the attack on the Crocus City Hall on Friday. A man's been arrested on suspicion of murder at Heathrow Airport just hours after a man was hit by a car and killed in East London. The Metropolitan Police say officers were called to reports of a crash in Newham yesterday where a 35-year-old was found injured at the scene. The Home Office has launched a social media campaign in Vietnam to deter migrants from coming to the UK illegally. The campaign will use adverts on Facebook and YouTube to target people in the Southeast Asian country who may be considering making illegal journeys to the UK. An increasing proportion of small boat migrants are Vietnamese and they are one of the top 10 nationalities for migrants crossing the channel illegally. And drivers are being warned over long delays this week as more than 14 million Easter getaway trips are expected to take place. The RAC says journeys on some popular routes could take twice as long as the normal as the bank holiday weekend coincides with the start of a two-week holiday for many schools. And rail travel will also be disrupted as Network Rail carries out engineering works. You're up to date with the headlines. I'll have another update at 10 o'clock. Thank you, Emily Rose Adams. Absolutely fantastic. And thank you to everybody for all your comments. Are we going to crack? Are we going to do some? Of these because it's been very, very, very busy this morning. Uh, what's your reaction to, to the news that MPs and peers have been a target of cyber attacks from China? We asked you this morning. Sarah from Hexham. Have you been to Hexham? I haven't. Beautiful. God's country. The North. What, what's Dave shouting at me for? What is she? Keep going. Uh, Sarah from Hexham, which is God's country, Northumberland. Uh, in addition to technology, the Chinese energy alone. Uh, own a large amount of our electricity and water come and it's a security threat by the Chinese is truly frightening. Howard emailed in to say for all the major security threats the UK government and tech companies are to blame. We have Chinese produced CCTV systems, electric cars and home smart meters. I worry that any of these can be used to carry out such a cyber attack. Good morning to John from Lincolnshire. We could have addressed the Chinese problem years ago but we chose not to. The cyber attack happened years ago. So what has this government done about it since then? Answer, absolutely nothing. Keep your thoughts coming. Talk today at talk.tv, text to 8722. Start your message with the word talk. And our top story this morning, as we've been discussing, MPs are set to be briefed on the cyber threat posed by China later today after suspicions that Beijing is behind a wave of cyber attacks against parliamentarians. They've also been accused of accessing the personal details of 40 million voters in a hack on the Electoral Commission in 2021. It's Monday, which means joining us now, it's the legend from Teesside, the Sun's columnist, the legend that is Rod Little. Rod, good morning, my friend. You've had a haircut, Good morning, son. mate. Good you've morning. had, your, you've you had your haircut. Yeah, we're good. Um, lots to talk about. Um, China. So we're talking to Tobias Elwood earlier, and Tobias has been saying to me for three years on this station, I'm telling you, Jez, there's an access. China, Russia, Iran, yeah. this country needs to be aware. And for all the people, Rod, who scream, oh, warmongering, you need to get wise. Today, Parliament are going to be told that 40 million of us have had our details hacked three years ago, and it's the first we've heard of it. We need to wise up, don't we? Yeah, so I think it's not the first we've heard of it. Didn't, didn't we know a little bit about this in August? But it was not revealed at the time that China was to blame, simply people with an IQ above uh, the level of a bowl of oxtail soup suggested that it probably was China that was to blame. This was uh, when when we were told that there was a massive hacking scandal uh, back at the end of uh, middle of 2023. So, yeah, I mean, and, and, and Tobias is right, isn't he? Um, 
even if we didn't have details of China's uh, malign cyber influence, we should at least have suspected that China and Russia and Iran, but particularly China and Russia, uh, we know that Russia has been involved in cyber warfare against us uh, on, on, for at least 10 years. So we, we've got to be... I, I, I always hope, Jeremy, this is this is what I hope, is that these scandals come out and I always think, oh, well, MI5 and MI6 and GCHQ, they've all got this covered. You know, we're doing the same thing to them. We're, we're level with them in this war. Uh, there's there's no great problem. But I, I do fear that that may not be the case. Can I ask you a personal question? Do you have TikTok? And would you, if not, would you get it in light of this news? I'm 63, love. I you know, know. You I might have, have it, Rod. TikTok. I can see you doing a TikTok dance or two. No, I can't. I'm just like me. We get excited as a pattern but, on the kitchen roll at our age. But, Rod, it is where young people get a lot of their news yeah. from nowadays. We were talking to Sarah Houston, our royal editor, earlier, about how much TikTok was to blame for the spread of this misinformation about yes. Princess Catherine. Could it be that TikTok is now kind of a soft threat, as it were, in terms of, of destabilising us? Yeah. Well, of course it is. No, no question about it at all. I mean, my answer to that is that young people shouldn't be allowed to vote. But I know that's not a terribly popular, popular point of view. Uh, I think the age of voting should be raised to 25. Uh, but but, but that's, that's a different issue. Uh, yeah, but, but you're absolutely right. Of course, TikTok is a problem, much as was a problem, which at least in the end Boris Johnson recognised, that actually getting our nuclear power stations built and run by the Chinese was probably a bit of a dicey thing to do. So we've stopped all that now. But we are learning these things a little bit late in the day. Uh, and, and it is, of course, a worry. Um, Rob, the other story over the weekend is this. Um, the, the horrendous Russian attack that we saw, and we... This morning we started talking about it and I sort of had a theory, we were talking about it before, and then, um, who was it? Major Chip Chapman said absolutely no, but whilst terrible, awful, 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 useful rhetoric for, for, for Putin, really, and apparently the CIA warned Russia uh, before this was going to happen, it wasn't, you know, paid attention to. Within five minutes of it happening, yeah. he's blaming Ukraine. People are talking false flag. This has happened before. You would understand the cynics saying, hold on a minute, mate, not that you were part of this, but you've let this happen, and this absolutely does further persuades your people with all the rhetoric you'll do that, that, that you need to be even stronger in Ukraine. Do you have those suspicions, or am I going off the end of the... Uh, Am I going down the wrong way here? What, what do you make of that, Rob? I, I, I don't know. I do remember it wasn't just the CIA. I think it was also our intelligence services warning Putin that, uh, or, or warning the world that Moscow was going to face a terror attack very soon. And I think they got the date wrong. I think they were about a week out. But I remember that, that warning coming out and thinking, uh, well, that's an odd way to approach it. Uh, how's Putin going to respond to that? And the Russians dismissed it, and then the terror attack takes place. So it, it is very useful rhetoric for Putin uh, and very useful timing. Uh, and, you know, it, it's a horrible thing to do to um, to use those many dead as a, as a, as a weapon. Um, and I, I wouldn't want to do that. But I know that Vladimir Putin would have no such reservation. Uh, and so it has seemed at the moment. Um, the suggestion is that Ukraine let these people into the country um, via Ukraine and that they were heading back to Ukraine. Uh, let, let's hope that that's not true, but they've clearly been tortured. Uh, and I suspect that Vladimir Putin will get the answers from them that he wants to hear rather than the answers that are actually true. Uh, moving on to things a little bit closer to home now, Rod. Did you hear Jeremy Hunt's <laughs> comments over the weekend oh. that actually a £100,000 salary uh, was not quite enough for his constituents in Surrey? What do you make of that? Yeah, no, well, I, I wrote about it in the Sunday Times this week and uh, revealed that I'm part of a charitable endeavour up here in Middlesbrough uh, called Feed Godalming Collective, where we gather together chicken parmos and send them to Surrey so that the hard-pressed people of, of South West Surrey could have something to eat as they <laughs> desperately tried to pay their, uh, their, their mortgages. Uh, because it's, it's, it's shocked and appalled us up here. Um, the average wage up here, by the way, is £29,000 per year. Um, 
I, I, there is probably an element of truth in what Jeremy Hunt said, um, but it is the most tinnied, stupid thing to say to a public where there is real poverty. It's not simply that we can't afford a chilled shabby with our suppers. It's just, uh, Rod, Rod, I'll tell you what it is. It's just, I don't know who advises these idiots. I don't know who yeah, has no, their on. ear, right? Yes, of course, yeah. there are people on larger salaries and none of us yeah. in society want to say you can't be successful. But you total... Oh, I nearly said the wrong word then. Did somebody not say in your ear, what's this country's under a cost of living crisis, you idiot? North of Watford Gap, because, oh, yeah, by the way, there is a large part of the country north of Watford Gap and outside the M25. People would die for that sort of money, you stupid man. The optics, the insensitivity exactly is beyond me, yeah. Rod. It's not rocket science, is it? No, no, it's not. It, it, it's, it's stupidity on an epic level. Um, and presumably he's attempting to curry favour with his own constituents, who I suspect may have had enough of him, um, which, which that would be a, uh, a tragedy for the world, wouldn't it, if he lost his seat? Um, but but, but it, is, it is so insulting to the, to the millions of people up here who live in what can only be described as poverty, and a poverty which has got worse because the inequality between North and South has increased under the Conservative government. Uh, and we are, we are uh, not speaking personally, but we in the North East are worse off now, comparatively, than before levelling up again. <laughs> you know, so there is a huge cynicism about the Conservative Party up here, and what Jeremy Hunt said will only exacerbate that. And Rod, we've, we've running out of time, but I just want to get your quick comments on this story. Have you heard about um, the UK government placing social media adverts in Vietnam to try and dissuade Vietnamese people from making the journey over to the UK? Yeah. Do you think that's a That's way one of ten countries, not any in the other nine. And my only thought was, so you're using social media, are right, to advertise this? And the day was saying that China's getting all our information. Brilliant. Beyond me. Yeah, well, well you may be right about that. I, I, I mean, the other thing to say is that if we're going to have immigration, uh, I would be very happy to see it from Vietnam uh, because uh, the Vietnamese people who've come here before have been uh, entrepreneurial, industrious, hardworking and very little crime. Uh, and one of, one of the arguments I think we have to make in future is that we ought to have targeted immigration. And if there was any country I would target for immigration, well, Vietnamese, uh, Vietnam is one of the top ones. Amazing. Hi. Top man. Rod Little, thank you very much Good indeed. Uh, all yours. This is very... I'm in awe. One of my heroes is in the studio. Well, thank you very much. But enough about me. Yeah, Still yeah, to come. Yeah. It's often called the silent killer. But do you know the symptoms? Well, TalkSport's own Graeme Souness is here to tell you why you must regularly check your blood pressure. This is Talk Today. I'm, I'm completely speechless. Graeme Souness is next on Talk Today. I've gone all unnecessary. See you in a minute. <laughs>
Alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, yeah. minutes, four... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what did fail her. We're supposed to, supposed to was have another moved on from era. That. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. That's it. Welcome back to Talk Today. What is it? Nine, uh, just gone quarter past nine. Now, over four million people in England could be living with high blood pressure without even knowing it. And this is important. If left untreated, this so-called silent killer can lead to heart attacks and strokes. Well, football legend and talk sports star Graham Souness has had his own battle with high blood pressure and even suffered a heart attack in 2015, despite feeling fit and healthy. Now he's calling for everyone else to get checked and he joins us now. Welcome, Graham. Uh, this is something that many people could be living with but might not know about it. You don't know it. You know, I think I was a perfect, or I am a perfect example. I was 38. Um, diagnosed with extremely high blood pressure, high cholesterol levels, and ultimately it led to me having open heart surgery wow. at 38. At now, 38? Yeah, I'd recently finished playing. Um, I was manager of Liverpool, um, and I had a problem with the gym. I couldn't set up the gym. I was doing basically everything that professional footballers were doing during the week. And the only thing I wasn't doing was playing on a Saturday. But I, I played my last game when I was 36. So it was obviously on me then, and it just, it just shows that someone as fit as I was then, mm. I was walking around. And you had no idea. And, and, you, and you talk the, about, you talk about like a professional footballer. You think about every part of the training and the diet and everything, and you ended up with open heart surgery, which says what to the to the people that don't do yeah, any of not, that. That wasn't the sole reason. Obviously, the genetics were involved, but that was a contributing factor. Right. That I had extremely high blood pressure. Mm. And it, and it led to me having this operation. The only symptom, looking back, the only thing that I can think of from which may have been a symptom was I wasn't... I could have one pint of lager, two glasses of wine, and I'd be, you'd find me doing that. Really? Um, yeah, it was exaggerating my, my blood pressure levels. It's certainly it something. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit boring about all of this. I think kids should be taught CPR in schools. So that these sorts of checks are really important. Can I bring in junior doctor broadcaster, mm. Dr Basha uh, Mukachai? Uh, Dr Basha... Really, really grateful for you coming on. Just very briefly, um, how important is it to go and get your blood pressure checked? It's absolutely paramount. We're seeing younger and younger people with high blood pressure. The current climate we're living in, the junk food that children and young people are constantly consuming, the stress, the pollution, all of these factors contribute to pressure on your heart, essentially. So absolutely get yourself checked out. You can even get a small monitor yourself and get, get yourself checked at home as well. So it's not something you need to get a GP appointment for. I'm a GP trainee. I know how hard it is to get a GP appointment. So you can do this at home as well. That's really and what, what is it that actually causes high blood pressure? I know there's lots of different factors, but what does it mean? Does it put pressure on the heart? What are the kind of logistics of it? So as, um, as you're getting older, your blood vessels, they stiffen up. So essentially they are unable to squeeze as, as well. And over time, that just means that the pressure inside of the blood vessels builds up. Your heart has to push harder and harder against these stiff blood vessels to get blood around your body. This Seriously, usually great. is... Graham was 38 and was a, f a professional footballer who was as, I mean, I guess as fit as anything, right? Yeah, I had a problem with staying out of the gym. I couldn't stay away from it. You know, when I finished playing, just psychologically, I knew I was doing too much, um, but 
I was doing all this with extremely high blood pressure. What did it Thinking do? Thinking you were being healthy, but actually... I, I, no, I didn't think about it. No? No. no. It wasn't impacting on my life at all. When I'm you were told... Only, maybe when, the headaches. When you realised that that led to the open heart surgery, I'm really, I think this is the message, did that change everything about how you saw yourself no, in life? No, and this is a scary... This is a scary thing, because I was leading a healthy lifestyle. You know, I always trained properly. Um, fortunately, was never injured. Um, never had any period of inactivity out of the game. Um, wasn't much of a drinker, and that was a drinking culture then. Um, diet was good, and it happened to me, and I think that's a message I'd like to get across. If it can happen to me, it can happen Absolutely. to anyone. There's young guys out there now training in the gym, running marathons, doing everything, and they could have high blood pressure, which ultimately will lead to them having issues. And going forward. Dr Basher, just to bring you back in, so say somebody does one of these high blood pressure, sorry, blood pressure checks at home <clears throat> and they are found to have high blood pressure, what's the next step? Do they contact their GP or go to a pharmacy and, and, and seek further help? Yeah, so um, uh, high blood pressure at home, a reading would be about 135 over 85, but I have a lot of patients who call in because they're one off blood pressure reading was really high and that's okay but if you're experiencing any symptoms with it in terms of you know your blurring eye blurry eyes headache chest pain any of that you call 111 straight away but if you're not having any symptoms i would suggest repeating the blood pressure a one off reading is not so worrying for us doctors as well if we have a one off high reading we usually ask patients to take take 7 days readings at home so you can take morning and evening blood pressures at home for 7 days and work out an average and if that is high then 100% make an appointment with your doctor just very but quickly basha just very quickly you haven't got much time um very quickly, what tips to avoid high blood pressure? That would be the obvious question, right? What tips? Um, so, I mean, I would say that exercise, healthy diet, all of these things are you know, a given for sure. But salt and sugar, reducing the amount of salt and sugar in your blood, will hurt, uh, in your diet, will 100% make a difference. But the interesting thing and why Graham is perfect to front mm. this campaign is that you did all of that, you're still at it, which is yeah. sending the message, and, get checked. And that is a message I'd like to get across today. It happened to me and I felt I was as fit as a flea. Yeah. Mm. And I, everything I was doing would suggest I was fit as a flea, but this thing was ongoing in my system and I had it, you know, ultimately a, an open heart surgery with it. Have you found since you've spoken out about it, other people have contacted well, you or uh, it's opened up yeah, conversations? Yeah, th this campaign, we have to really get it out there. You know, it's a non-invasive test. It's just a, yeah. you know, a band on your arm. on the arm, yeah. Yeah, it's nothing. As the doctor said, you can buy these, these kits from any good chemist. Um, and they're rolling out this programme where I hope, I hope that anyone listening to this and sees the adverts on the television, go for it. Because, A, you have a duty to your, to your family if you're married, yeah. to your wife to your mum and dad. It happens to young people who think they're fit as well, and that's the message I'd like to get If you're across. not doing it for yourself, do it for your family. Exactly. Gray, thank you exactly. so much. So good, oh, to, good see to see you. you. Uh, listen you, to him on TalkSport. He's a legend. Graham Sinus and Adabasha, uh, Mukachai, thank you all very much indeed for watching. That's almost it for today. I've it got to go indeed. and do the next show now. You've got to be Alex uh, Phillips, I believe. Again? <laughs> really? <laughs> well, Multi-talented, not. <laughs> well, we will see you tomorrow from 6am. Kev and Jez are up next, but first, here is the weather with Naz. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining us. Have a good one. See you tomorrow. ta -ra. Well, no, you'll see him in five. All right, fair enough. <laughs>
will be significant snow likely for central and eastern parts of Scotland where the Met Office have a warning above 300 metres up to 20 centimetres likely and above 200 metres up to around 2 or 5 centimetres. So some disruption to travel likely by Tuesday morning. England and Wales though will be mostly dry except across the north and west where there will be spells of rain. Then through tomorrow we continue to see the rain and hill snow move and clear away from Scotland. It will come brighter there. Some rain edging up towards Northern Ireland and Wales. Parts of the West Country will see rain at first heading towards areas of the Midlands and central southern England later in the day. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Oi, oi, treat Having a conversation with a professional journalist, he chose to belittle her, diminish her, um, and use sexist language. I can't stand the word casual sexism. There's nothing casual about igniting and using kind of diminishing and belittling language about anyone, especially someone who's trying to do her job. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. And when the media constantly refer to trans criminals, when they are biological men as women, we will no longer put up with these lies about our gender anymore and about our sex. Trans woman is not a woman, trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. I, that's robust. It's going to cause a, an argument. It's going to cause tension. But we've got to do it, because otherwise this country is going down the pan. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying, um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yeah. Quite yeah. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. One parent commented on a review of Peppa Pig that their daughter had begun to lash out since watching the show and added that Peppa is rude, bossy, a liar, tattletale and even more. Say it's not so. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh. It's carry on. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Whoa, it. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know what's uh, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans. Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just for, minute, for, Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, you put him in an ice cream store. And once you get defeated by a guy named Begley, that's <laughs> it. You retire from politics, and you speak to Rosanna on primetime and have a lot more fun. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, had lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. They're now trying to say, 